all praise to the most high. All right, start a little early here. So got to get some, um, one thing I want to do is we got to make sure that we, we talk to everyone about the uh, the Bible lessons on Zoom. We're live on all three. We all are? Three. Yes. Oh, peace and blessings, Peace family. and blessings. How's everyone doing? As we say, shalom, shalom, which means peace. Shalom, shalom, shalom. How's everybody doing? All praise to the most high. All right. And well, uh, we can hear you good on you on TikTok. Oh, praise <laughs> to the most high. As a matter of fact, I want you I'm to, trying to see what YouTube look like. That's all. Let me go. Oh, okay, no problem. Well, first of all, what does it say? Um, what's it allow notifications allow? Um, I need you to get me on there on this one. On oh, what TikTok? This one, yes. Or YouTube. TikTok, please, if you don't mind. This is TikTok. Okay, I don't see the comments and all. You know what I mean? How, how you can see you put the comments on there? Let me see. You're live on here? Oh, sweetheart. You're live on TikTok. I don't know that you can. When I'm doing it myself, should be able to, right? You know what? I got an idea. Let me see here. I got you an idea. How's everybody doing? We're just trying to figure a few things out here. Yeah, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. All right, bear with me, bear with me. Let me turn this down real quick. How's everybody doing? We got a lot of things going on, a lot of current events, and just a whole lot of things going on right now. Hold on one second. I'm trying to check some out. All right, we came on a little bit early. Let's see here. There we go. So here it is. Let's see here, um, live. Let's see how this works. No oh, praise to the most high. Let's see here. All righty. I see something here. One second. You see uh, it? Yeah, it keeps going out. Couldn't live videos. There we and, go. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, but it's not. It's going right back out. So what? Is, what does it say? It's saying something at it, the top. It, yes, right. There you go. All right. How's everybody doing? All right. I was trying to see. Can I get another way to watch certain things on here? So, all praise. How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's doing well. Hey, for everyone here, I do apologize. Uh, I said Wednesday we might have done a live lesson and we would have um, done it on via Zoom with the studies uh, with the children and other people who wanted to do the book of Adam and Eve. But we have some family in town. My wife, um, being a realtor and broker, had to show some houses and show us some houses. So um, when you got family, sometimes you have to break away and cook them a nice meal last night. I want to be hospitable, as we should do with our guests. So that's why we didn't get to... Um, do the zoom lesson on wednesday so what i'm going to try to do is about eight o'clock on sunday um send out these email links on sunday and get people on on sunday so um everyone here who wants to and i've got a lot of email links to the zoom oh, no. so um i've got a lot of email links to the zoom bear with me one second please and what i want to do is let's see here all right, I'm gonna see ministry. So for the ministry phone number, I want you to give it to you guys again. Um, my moderators, you guys can give it if you got the ministry phone number. I greatly appreciate it. Uh let's see who we got on here. I don't praise it to the most high. Let's see here. All right, I want to just say hi to Calistro, Shalom, uh Nicole Yah, Shalom, Nicole Yah, LaShonda Lewis. Uh, Shabbat uh, Shalom, Shalom. We say Shabbat Shalom on the Sabbath. It's really Shalom, um, which means peace. Um, Shabbat Shalom means peace on the Sabbath. All praise to the Most High. Um, Hairless Shalom, Nikki. Shalom, Nikki. Steve, Stephen Thomas. Shalom, uh, Anthony Davis. Shalom, Warrior Prime. One thirty-seven. Shalom. All praise to the Most High. Kathleen Reed. Hey, that's Miss Reed. Peace How you doing, Miss Reed? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings to you. Um, Doris Washington, peace and blessing. Alan, shalom. Tawanda Williams, shalom. Saying shalom to everybody here. All right, who do we got in? Caden, shalom, Caden. Josiah G, shalom, Josiah. All right. Throw guy, shalom. So we got a lot of people chiming in. All praise to the most high. 
you know, folks, I just want to say this is a real beautiful time for all of us because uh, one thing we're learning is that we've got people from all over the world who are chiming in and everyone's really, really happy to actually be getting this wisdom and be coming out of this dark state. And, and I must say, we've been in some darkness for a long time, a yeah. real long time. Mm -hmm. So now that the Lord is putting us out of that dark state, the biggest thing we need to do right now is focus on saving our souls and know that these times are coming to an end and everybody can feel it and see it. You know, these other nations need to worry. You know, it's time for them to kind of shake a little bit. We've been shaking for almost 3,000 years, trembling. And right now the Lord is taking that shaking away from us and putting that dread in these other nations' hands. And I thank him for that because one thing about when you, before you come into this walk, is when you see everything that's going on on the earth, it's so easy to sit back and just be afraid. And the reason that people are afraid is because they don't have knowledge, they don't have wisdom. But now I notice when people start reading these Seifer and start reading some of these other books that we're recommending, now that they're getting wisdom, it's casting that fear away. You see, religion is bondage. Religion is where the fear comes in. It teaches you to fear man, yeah. to fear everything around you. And it casts away the Lord. It keeps you in ignorance. It keeps you in what, Sister Micaiah? Ignorance. It keeps you in perpetual ignorance. So this is why we're here to take our people out of ignorance. And and and, and that's why the Lord said, my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. knowledge. which which means you're ignorant. You have no knowledge of anything. And religion makes people scared to get knowledge outside of them. That's right. They teach you that you got to go through them in order to receive the kingdom. And I always say this when I was sitting there with my wife one day at the Kingdom Hall. And I remember the guy said, we know that the only way to get to the kingdom of God <laughs> is to go through the Jehovah Witness organization. I said, well, did he just say that? He said, you got to go through them in order to get to the Messiah. He, he totally admitted. He totally disannulled Yeshua, like took him out completely. And my spirit yelled at me. And so when my spirit yelled at me, one of the biggest things I knew, I told my wife, I can't come back here anymore. And the Lord told me not to. And that was just the beginning of the, the phases as we've all gone through when the Lord is doing a refining process. Yeah. That's all he's doing. He's refining us. And that's why I don't want you guys beating yourselves up about, you know, you don't get me wrong. Um, there was a statement the other day mm -hmm. about someone said about you can, um, if you sin, uh, you know, what did pastor say about sinning? Sister Micaiah? Sinning. Yeah, remember the pastor was saying about sinning to you. You, you told me, you came and told me about um, it doesn't matter if you sin, you walk away or something like that to that effect. Well, you something know, to that effect. It's the one save always saves uh, mm. doctrine. And so he was saying something. Had shared yeah. a video with me, and this pastor was saying, right, basically under uh, since since Yahusha died for us, he was saying Jesus, of course, but um, basically you can't sin. Really, so. I want to read. Well, get your Bible, please. Some kinds. We don't worry about the chat. So no, I'm trying to get my uh, YouTube back. Oh, what happened? You lost it? I don't know. It just sounded like this. It might be. Um, get out completely and just start over. Yeah, let's get out completely and just start over. That's probably what you got to do. I know it's probably show up, sweetheart. All right, let me read Hebrews 10, 26. For all those people out here who says it doesn't matter, you know, um, you know, you sure forgave us of all of that. And if we sin... Well, I'll ask you a question, and I'm going to say this, and I want all you guys to grab this, everyone. If somebody tells you that the laws are done away with, then I want you to ask them, then, what is sin? You okay? It, it worked? There you go. Well, because when I read 1 John 3 and 4, it says for sin is transgression of the law. And for transgression of the law is sin. So saying that, if the laws are done away with, then how can you sin? It makes no sense. See, the Lord is not the author of confusion. And so what Christianity has done and what man has done, um, and, and I'm going to just keep it real, what the Romans and Edom or Esau has done is brought pure confusion. Yes. It, the math system, they make the math so hard. When you go in other societies, they teach a simple math. Um, with, even when you get, say, something with, with, with rules and stipulations, they'll give you words that you got to go look through five dictionaries to figure out. <laughs> They, then got their own language. they got their own language. A lot of it's Latin. Latin is basically Satan's language. They have hidden codes in their language. Then they got you got to read all the bylaws, and then they'll tell you what they say the devil is in the what, Sister McKay? Detail. The devil's Man. in the detail. Is he? Because the devil is always in the details. If you don't read stuff on a contract, that's why I implore all of Israel, use your wits now. 
the way these devils get us is in the little details. And if you don't know something or you don't not sure about fine details, get someone who can read for you or get you um what is that uh that that little attorney service that you can get? Legal Zoom. Legal Zoom, okay. legal aid, legal aid. You can get legal aid, pay a little small fee and they'll read the documents for you and you can legal have shield, you legal shield. About. Is it legal yeah. shield? All right, legal shield. I think you only pay a small fee. Um, maybe 99 bucks or so, but you have lawyers at your hand if you don't understand documents because this truly how Esau, Edom, and Rome gets you. They get you with the little with small the thing. Yeah, and this is why the Lord said we're in a cloudy day. Everything's just cloudy and distorted. Um, you know, and so um, let's see, Hebrews 10, 26. Let's go there. Oh, yeah. Let me see here, Hebrews 10 and 26. So for those people who say that it doesn't matter if you sin, and then the Lord loves sinners and all of this. I want you guys, they don't read scripture. When you read Hebrews 10, 26, and this is all those people who say this, this is a Christian thinking. I want y'all to understand that Ignatius Iotis is the one who started what you call Christianity. Now we know with the Council of Nicaea, Constantine and them gave us 66 books. And they're the ones who took out so many books and gave us this false doctrine. Mm -hmm. That false doctrine is said that now you don't have to follow laws. That false doctrine they gave us now says that instead of using Yeshua's name, we're going to let you use Jesus or Jesuits. That false doctrine start teaching you, you know what? You don't need to worship on the Sabbath no more. We want to go ahead and start worshiping on Sunday or Saturnella, worship the sun god, Jesus. This is what that false doctrine has brought. And so what the Lord is doing is he's bringing us out of that deep cloud and understanding and teaching us that if we don't follow his laws, his blueprint, we'll never have peace. Mm -hmm. You'll never have peace. You'll be on a perpetual roller coaster. You'll be on the sandy ground. When the wind comes, you're blown away. But when you walk with the Lord, nothing, nothing can blow you away because he's a nail in your hand. Yes. So Hebrews 10, 26 says, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the what? Truth. There remains no more sacrifice for your sins. Why? Because before we would take a bird, a dove, and a bull, priests would sacrifice it. That will cover for our sins. But now you're sure he ended up dying on a tree. And he died on a tree for what reason? So that he can save his people. That's why Yeshua means Yah saves. That's why his name means something. We don't want to beat you down by the name of Jesus. You want to call him Jesus, you go right ahead. But the Lord says better that you didn't know than to know. When we called on that name, we did it out of ignorance. When we called on that name, he knew we was talking to him because the faith we had in that name because we didn't know any other names. But now we know his real name means y'all saved. That's why the Lord say, if, he says, if my son come in my name, you will not accept him. But if he comes in another name, then you would accept him. That's that Jesus. So when we are saying these things, folks, it's not to beat you down or try to go into anything, ladies and gentlemen. What it is just saying is this. Now that we have his true name, there's power there. Because like I said before, you go to cast out some demons in Jesus' name, Geno Jennings, Gen Gino Jennings. Gino Jennings, and um, we've seen other people. My wife just attested to a lady with spirits coming out to my call on your Jesus in the name of Jesus. You do it now, the demons are going to laugh at you because they know that the real name is out here now. You guys know his name is Yeshua. There's power there. You know the most highest name is Yahuwah. He who breathes life nail in hand. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Um, and just to be clear, like, mm -hmm. Yahushua said one thing when he came, he came to fulfill the laws, right. not to do away with them. So certain laws were already fulfilled. That's right. And that's where the confusion is. Like the law of sacrifice. Yeah. You know, he, he fulfilled that. No longer you sacrifice animals, no more than doing it. He came. He did away with it. Another thing he did, he left something we didn't have before. Before Yeshua came, it was, it was, it was laws and what? Judgment. Two people saw you done something, you were done. Two people seen you do it, but he did something else. He gave us grace, repentance, and if we walk right, he gives us salvation. That was not under the level of the law. That's New Testament. That's the New Testament he started. That New Testament and New Covenant will not be fulfilled till he comes back for his bride, him being the bridegroom. That's why we got to make sure we got some oil in our lamps. So I wanted you guys to make right, sure you guys are right now in Hebrews 10, 26. For everybody out there who says you can sin, he loves sinners. No, no, no. He said his sacrifice is no longer mm -hmm. good for you once you start going out there, doing things yeah. you know no better, and you've tasted what? And read it again. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth. See, when you call no Jesus and you know his name is Yeshua, you know the truth, but you still call no Jesus because you're so stuck on this world. Then he said, get out of this world. 
Don't do what they do or you'll take on their plagues. Stop calling on that Babylonian name. Stop calling on the name that is Greek and have nothing to do with Hebrew. Stop calling on the name you understand that in some books is written as a demon. And then in, when you look at it in Spanish, it's Jesus. It's a sun god. So saying that, if you are so stuck on calling that name and that's what makes you feel good, you go right ahead. But see, we in the light know there's way more power in calling on Yeshua. Way more power. It casts out all demons. All you got to do is put it to the test. Put it to the test. You know how many people have come on here and said, Brother Yabril, I was listening to you and your wife and y'all was in your lessons, but I was listening to how you were saying and how y'all were saying, just call on Yeshua. And when you call on him, it'll, be, it'll rebuke the demons. And everybody who said it, guess what? They said that the demons have been fleeing. They've been immediately, they leave. Once, if they can open their mouth. Now, sometimes some people can't open their mouth because of the things they're doing. You ever heard of something that's saying the devil's riding your back? Mm -hmm. What that is, is you got so much things you're thinking. It's not even what you're doing. It's deeper than what you're doing now. If you're not thinking right, that's why he says some people have what? 666 on their forehead because you bought into the doctrine of this world. Once you bought into that doctrine, you, you, you got a spiritual branding on your forehead. Yeah. And the only way it can be erased is you got to get it washed with water, which is the word. This book here, the Sefer, the King James 1611, the King James 1611 with the Apocrypha. Those are the ones we stick with. The King James 1611, all those books are in the Sefer. Also, Jasher Jubilees and many other books. But once you start reading these words, when you're in ignorance and you start doing things to consume not only your body, but your spirit. And you read that word, it washes it away. It'll wash all that filth away. And this is why you got to keep going back to the word. You got to. Um, it's a lot of things going on right now. Before we start, let's say a prayer real quick. I always say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, heaven blessed be you, Adonai Yahuwah. Father, thank you for bringing us here today as a family. Thank you, Father, so much for bringing us out of this deep darkness. Father, those here right now who are feeling spirits or things around them, Father, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you give them the strength and understanding and let them know that they have your son now, the Holy Spirit on this earth, whom our forefathers did not have before Yeshua walked. But when he died, Heavenly Father, he left us that Holy Spirit so it could convict us of the things we're doing wrong, so it also could guide us through this wilderness. Thank you, Yeshua. Bless you. Bless you, our King and priest. For without you, we would not have this grace. Without you, we would not have repentance. Without you, we would have no hope of salvation. Thank you for dying for us and you suffer for us, you even sweat blood. I pray, Heavenly Father, as we walk and as we talk, we represent you and your holy name. For you are El Shaddai, King of King and God of Gods. You are Yahuwah. You are, I am that I am, which means it shall come to pass. Bless you, Father. Thank you for the promise you make to Abraham. Thank you for the promise you made to Isaac. And thank you for the promise that you gave to Jacob, we being his offspring. I pray as we go through this lesson that you engrave this word in our hearts. I pray, Heavenly Father, that our souls, Father, that seek you and they seek you unceasingly, Heavenly Father, find that path to you, Father. And I pray that you keep our eyes single, Father, so that we're not all over the place, so we can focus on you and your son and the promise, knowing that we are joint heirs of this world and we are to be a light. Thank you, Father, so much. I pray that you bless this lesson and give us wisdom and understanding and a just tongue in the name of your son, Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Amen. All praise to the most high. All right. Now, typically what I do is turn off these here things here. Let me do this here real quick. Let me see if something here. I'm going to turn off these settings. Settings, comment settings. Oh, comment soft. Uh, show most sent comments. All right. No comments. All right. Cool, baby. That way we can get the lesson. Sister Kay, you might want to slide over a little bit more for them, I oh, think. Yeah, okay. they can't see you, baby. Glad to see you. All oh, praises. Okay, so what we're going to do, Um, I know Brother Brian is probably a little tired of me because he's supposed to have three platforms up, but I've been so busy and haven't been able to put these three platforms together. So um, today is Thursday. Tomorrow I got to work. So I got to get this done for um, definitely before the Passover. Um, the Passover is going to be next week. Uh, it's gonna we have one space open for anybody that we wants do. to come. Okay, so she said we have one space open. Uh, it's going to be located in it's at Cobb County here in Atlanta, Smyrna, Georgia, Smyrna, Georgia which mm -hmm. is like Cobb. Yeah, so we're going to be there. Um, should be a beautiful event. I pray that the Lord is this the Lord's day. 
And I'm just so excited about celebrating his day and knowing that he's the one that took us out with a long stretched arm with power and might. And knowing that he's getting ready to come back and gather us again with the sign of Jonah coming over the America, uh, which symbolizes the end. When Yeshua was asked, when will we know? And he says, I'm going to give you the sign of Jonah. And that April 8th sign is a beautiful thing because now we know that, you know, we are the children of the Most High and that we've come out of the belly of the well, man. And right now mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're yelling like Jonah did. You know, it's, you know? it's beautiful to watch mm -hmm. everything come full circle. Yeah. Really. It really uh, is. The, page, the, the prophecies written in this book just are coming to life. And you like know, rapidly. And it's, it's amazing because you can get your popcorn out. And it's like a movie playing out. Mm -hmm. Everything that's written is playing out. And and, and, and and when and I'm gonna say this again, when Putin went into those vaults and he pulled those documents from this 12th century, he went back to the 12th century with some of these paintings. It's a beautiful thing to see that he showed the whole world who the most high is first. Let him know that the Lord that we serve and the Yeshua or the Christ that you serve is black. And not only that, not black, but of color, because we don't want to say black, of Israel. And also showing that the so-called Americans, because all those people look like us, are um, the Lord's children. And even said, you know, we got to be careful who we persecute. Mm -hmm. We got to be, we got to watch what we do now. We Now that we know the truth, what did he mean by that? What he meant by that was now that we know these are the Lord's children, we need to be treading light because it, it, it can go really bad for us. He knows who we are. He knows who he is in the and book. other nations are starting to recognize. Yes, they are. So saying that, um, you know, someone asked a question, if we're not African and we're from West Africa, how can it be? Um, but it doesn't line up with Genesis 15, 13 and 14. So they asked, how can it be that it doesn't line up Genesis 13 and 14? We say we take it to another land. Well, so I think I don't know if you asked that clear. Like, yeah, I did. Uh, yes, I did. I said it. if we're if we're not African-American. And we're from America. How can it be that it doesn't line up with Genesis 15, 13, and 14? Simple as that. So saying that, you know, it it it, it basically I don't need what to read it. Say? Oh, you don't no, we don't it? need to. There's no need to. All right. It's just it's just simple. I mean, the maps have been changed, the compasses have been changed. The river Euphrates is actually the Mississippi River. So we don't, I mean, if you want to sit in contemplate how we got from one body of land to the other. First of all, let me give you a little history. First of all, you need to get a couple books. And one, I always tell you, you get the base of America's the true old world. You want to read it? So some kind you can if you want to read it. It's up to you. Well, it's for the audience. To well, go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Go ahead. Genesis 15, 13, and 14. I can feel my wife want to read some, y'all. I just know a lot of Well, no, book. it's just to give people more clarity on no what, what it says. Well, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Since you're bringing it up, you might as well read it. All right. Go ahead, sweetheart. Go ahead and read Genesis 15, 13, 14. All right. It says, and mm -hmm. he said, on, well, let me start at verse 11. It says, and when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Right. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, mm -hmm. a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, mm -hmm. and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Mm -hmm. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. All praises. So saying that, a lot of people will try to equate that with the first captivity in Egypt. They'll say, well, they was there 420. No, we was there 267 years in the first captivity. In slavery. In slavery. That's what it was, the first captivity. We've been in the Americas for almost over 400 years now. So saying that, I want you guys to understand when you look at the old maps, that California was called Israel. Utah was called Judah. Florida, Tennessee and all that was called the land of Goshen. These are old maps that they found. The River Euphrates is actually the Mississippi River. I want you guys to understand that when you're dealing with um, what they would call ancient Egypt, the capital of Egypt was what? Memphis. Then you find out it's one of the largest pyramids on earth is where? Memphis, Tennessee. So you're also finding out now that the Alps sign came over where? The Americas. Nowhere where else. Where's the top sign or the X mark coming? over the Americas. Why? Because this is the land of milk and honey. This is the land where all the giants are. 
that the Smithsonian come and take all their bodies. This is the maps all been changed. When well, you do oh, go, ahead. go ahead, sweetheart. What I was gonna say is mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing this person was asking, how can they be a stranger in a land that's not theirs when you're yeah. saying this is our land? Okay. And so when people understand that the American, mm -hmm. the the I'm sorry, the transatlantic slave trade, it did not happen the way that it was taught to us. Yeah, that's why Alex Haley okay. was sued. He was sued because it was a big lie. The ish gave that whole story. The people from Fiji Island. That you know where they come from? They took this, everything was done in reverse. And so the lands that are split up were, you got to remember, Naphtali had lands, Judah had lands, Zebulun had lands, the Hamites had land. You got to remember that what Canada or Canada was part of America, or Wakanda, or what Canada. You got to remember that Mexico was part of the Americas. It was actually the top, it was called the top of Atlantis, Atlanta, Atlantis. Then you're going to learn also that North America, South America, Central America, all of it was Americas. It was called Atlantis. It was called Asia. It was called Ethiopia, it, which means burnt face. And it, it was called also um, Tamaru. And then also we were called the what? Tart Tartarians. So saying that, you when you go through the river Euphrates, if we were on one side and we're taking over different rivers, even from Canada, even from other areas, these... None of the maps, none of the rivers that you know today are the same. Why? Because Edom and Rome have changed them all. They've changed everything. So that means that we've come from one body of the land in the Americas, which is what was vast, and brought to another part. So that's what it's saying. Now, when you get these old books, you learn that. You got to remember also that in 70 AD, Gen um, Benjamin, Levi, and Judah, they're considered what? The southern tribes. These people also, you got to remember, were taken away from their lands and taken to, to West Africa, Nigeria, Ghana. Then they went into Britain, France, Spain. You understand? That was our land also. Why? Because we were as numerous as the sands of the sea. Mm -hmm. So when you get into these maps, I want y'all to understand something. I want you to get this. You, We call America today what? The West, right? Mm -hmm. But all the maps from the 15th century back said this is the East. This is called the Orient. This was actually called the Orient. Then you learn that the Almanacs were the predecessors of the Mayans, and the Mayans set up next to the Egyptians. And then you learn that the Almanacs, it means he who brought us over the water. So, say, excuse me, Mayan. Mayan mean he who brought us over the water. So saying that, you, got, you also learn that Abraham was what? Since we read that he was Phoenician. And then you learn that the ancient city in Miami is what? An ancient Phoenician city. So saying that these are the old lands, but we own everywhere. I want y'all to understand something. If we was numerous as the sands of the sea, well, could we not come from everywhere and be brought to a certain place? We own the whole, listen, folks. But we were scattered, scattered everywhere to four, four corners, corners of the earth. earth. All Israel does not live in America. No, no. We got people all we're over the earth. scattered all over the earth. All over the earth. So you can't even count just America. Because we're in Brazil, we're we're in uh, excuse me, we're in Brazil is part of America. We're in Mexico, we're um in Turkey, we're in Saudi Arabia, we're everywhere. Excuse me, one second, let me make sure I do this here. So we're everywhere. So saying that, the only the reason the confusion is coming in is because you got to understand that the lands were split up, and these lands that you're looking at right now. Okay, let me give you an example how they change things. When that tanker exploded, the, the train, what was that at? It was called what? Palestine. Palestine. That eclipse that is coming over America. These are cities, the names are not changed. That eclipse that's coming over America is going by what first? Jonah what? Texas. Then it's going over seven cities called Nineveh. These cities have names haven't changed, folks. These are the old lands. And a lot of things that we've been taught are just backwards. So that's why Yeshua said, unless you become like a child, you cannot get in the kingdom because you got to humble yourself and know we have to be retaught and that everything we've been taught. How do you know when a white white T person lying? I'm just say this him. <laughs> when they open their damn mouth, I'm just keep it serious. When they open their mouth, that's when you know they're telling a lie. And I'm telling you, we invented everything. What did they invent? The patent office. They've taken everything from us. Our identity. They they they. I mean, it's it's not just. YT people, you got to understand, man, this is the whole world. All races have. And that's another thing. Everyone get, keeps stuck on eat them, eat them, eat them, eat them. When they don't understand, Psalms 83.1 says all these nations were confederate. Why do you think Zephaniah uh, 
chapter two talks about two, one through four talks about Gaza and Ashdod being taken away. It says, because those people sold us. So all these nations were confederate. And so when you see, he said he that we were being a land that wasn't ours, you know, he was talking about some of his children being moved because no matter how you look at it, we covered all four corners of the earth. All four corners of the earth is ours. So he just knew for a time period that after 400 years, we would be released. And that's a beautiful thing. What's going on with the Baltimore Bridge? What have you heard about that? That's something mm -hmm. else we were well, talking about. Well, come to find out, first of all, that bridge is named after the guy that um, cr created what? the Star Spangled Banner. And we know the Star Spangled Banner has nothing to do with us. That's why we don't sing it whatsoever. So mm -hmm. saying that, how you know, I think sometimes things happen with the spirit. But I think it's real ironic that you had all these other now accidents from these other companies. These companies had to foot the bill. But I just think it's kind of a little strange. It's just me thinking out loud. Why all of a sudden Biden come up four hours later and says, you know what? We're going to foot the bill to build a bridge. And I think it's a little strange, too, that the, the pilot of the of the that captain, captain of, of it was Ukrainian. Right. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. You know, I'm just thinking out loud, you know, just throwing some things out there. You know, I just think it's a little bit strange what's going on right now. That hub also, that was a major major trading hub. I got a brother Asher, a good friend of mine um, on here. We we talk all the time. Brother Asher, his wife texts my wife. What did she say? He was just on that bridge three days before it collapsed. But what but I was thinking, and what I told my wife is it didn't matter. He wouldn't have been on it anyway. He's there to feed the people at the at the baptism. The Lord would have made sure he's not on it because he's Alpha and Omega. He already knows he's a good soul and he's going to help his children. You know, the Lord got him over that bridge. You know, I think it's ironic. Is that three again? Three days, three yeah. days, three days, mm -hmm. three days, three days of darkness, three days of the witnesses, mm -hmm. three days that the, three days that the two witnesses, three days that the, um, the dry bones, three, three, three. It's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And you know, it's completion. But I just think I want to bring that up. I just think I want you guys to understand something. When you're dealing with this bridge in Baltimore, there was another bridge hit at the same time. So there's an agenda Expect going on. Some delays and yeah. shipping, supplies, all, all that right. kind of stuff. Yeah, there's an agenda. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into too much. Wisdom prevails on that note, and I'll leave it there. But um, powers that may be are pushing buttons. But the thing is, is the Lord said there'll be no stone what? Unturned. The skirts have been lifted. They and have plans, but the most high's plan is say it again right. they'll create a sword there. but he turns that sword on them yeah every time they create a sword he turns it on them um what is this korean beef b uh 4b movement korean 4b movement what is this yep. so we got to talk in code a little bit you know how they get so but anyway what's going on with well, this that's this all over tiktok too it's all over the news the, yeah the women in korea are the the b stand for four words in korean and they all start with the letter B. Okay. And so basically, it's like a feminist movement right. is here. Like, they don't want to have children. They're not having sex with the men. Um, they're shaving their heads bald. And it's one other thing. They're not They're not having... Uh, I said uh, they're not having children. Right. right. They're not having children. You said they decided that they were... But wanna, if you right. think about it now... Was it Kim Jong Un? Just mm -hmm. like a month or so ago, he Pain had a excuse. meeting with the yeah, nation. Yeah. They all was crying about the low birth rate. Birth rate. Yeah, this is judgment, people. Yeah, the Lord is doing it's not by force, not by might, with the spirit. spirit. Um, I also remember in Italy about three months ago, they said in Italy that there's minus zero birth rate. They're not having babies. Um, when you go around the world, these nations that oppressed us, the Lord has made it where He shut their wombs. And not only that, just get this, he's also did something when you read Romans 124, who changed the truth into a lie. Mm -hmm. He's made it where I saw a TikTok and I was looking at it and they were going around asking all the women, do you need a man? You need a man? You need a man? All these young white tea girls, you know what they kept saying? I don't need a man. We don't need a man for what? What do we need a man for? What do we need a man for? It was like 30 of them said it. But then they went to the YT guys and they were like, yeah, you need a woman. Yeah, you need a woman. Yeah, you need a woman. Yeah, so there's a mindset difference. What about Israel right now? What has been pushed on our people? What did Beyonce, you don't need a what? What that song she say? I don't need, I'm an independent woman. I don't need a man. Mm -hmm. You see, you, what, what our women don't understand, that women's live movement was started by the YT women because they had no rights. Their men didn't listen to them. 
And so what they did was they started the YT movement. But who jumped on with them? Mm-hmm. Who jumped right on the boat with them? Our women. Y'all ain't never had it with your man. Y'all make sure we listen to you. But uh, but in the 1960s or 1970s, our women jumped aboard. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden, we we want rights like a man. We need to have the same thing like a man. Woman, you can't be a man and a man can't be a woman. You can't do what a man do and a man can't do what you do. It's not even meant. Huh? My wife ain't took the garbage out of 10 years. <laughs> she can take it out, but she ain't take it out. You know what I mean? She ain't take it, she don't do it. You know, I clean a car. You know, I, I cut the yard. Now, in the other culture, the YT women cut the yard. But black women ain't getting in the yard. Now, if they got a man in the house, you know, if they got a son, he could be three years old. They're pushing the lawnmower. They're pushing the lawnmower. Boy, you got it like a man. My wife hard on a man. <laughs> My baby be four years old, baby. She, he need to learn, teach him early. Y'all women, be, four. four years old, four years old. She don't play with men. She don't play. You need to be working. Some You need to earn a living. So what I'm saying is, is that different cultures, um, do things differently. You know, when you're dealing with a black, uh, with, with, excuse me, with Israel culture, our women don't like getting out and cutting yards. They'll do it, but they don't like it. When you deal with, with the YT or Edom's culture, their women love to cut the yard. They'll get out there in a heartbeat. You what know? I the ride in lawnmower. I think that, that makes it. All right, how many black folk got a ride in lawnmower? <laughs> Come on now. I hear you. How many black folk got a ride lawnmower? I had one, but I sold it. I couldn't use it. It was like, it was no need. But no, if it's a ride lawnmower, I don't care if it's a ride lawnmower. Okay, I'm going to give an example. You said uh-huh. it's a ride lawnmower, right? Uh-huh. That's what you say. Now, remember your buddy, my buddy got his house, who we helped him get that, yeah. that farm out there? Yeah. His wife rode that lawnmower for two weeks, two weeks. After that, he couldn't <laughs> get her back on the lawnmower. Hilarious. Because with the women, it's fun at first, but when the fun wear off, right. well, you the man, you the man, you the man. <laughs> You the man. Act like it. Act like it. So I understand. Bugs out there, yeah, bugs. There, there you go. They're gonna always say it's but too many know, bugs. Honestly, we gotta change that mindset. I was yeah. telling my son. That. If you're gonna be in the wilderness, you gotta change yeah, that mindset. You gotta change that mindset. You know, you ladies are gonna be walking in the wilderness. I think it's good for you guys to go to the mountains sometimes, go hiking sometimes. You know what I mean? But when you go hiking, you understand be aware of your environment, be sharp. I mean, we went to the Smoky Mountains. My wife saw some bear poop. She's looking, it's fresh. He right around the corner. Like, man, who are you? Daniel, <laughs> Daniel Boone or something? You looking at the feces and telling me he right around the corner? You know, but what I'm saying is be careful of your environment. Make sure, ladies, yeah. you're not walking by yourselves. Always take someone with you. If you know there's yeah. mountain lions or wild animals out there, that may be not a path you well, want to take. Even people like yeah. Trail, you know, right, that's people true. Be getting robbed on that trail and stuff. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Just yeah. watch your environments. You gotta be. Um, what else is going on? Something I want y'all to understand. This whole Puffy old deal with Puffy and all of that. I want you guys to understand that what you see going on with him are the chickens coming home to roost. I want y'all to understand is when you sell your soul, that there's always, always going to be an end point. You got it for a moment, but in the end, they're going to get you. Now, what's really going on with him is simple. He was suing to rock. Uh, he, bought, he bit the hand that feeds him. So when you're once you sell your soul and you go into that back door and you're on this level here, but these people take you way up here, but you decide, you know what? Now I'm the man, you know, you get bigger, but really what that is, it'll reprobate mine. That's being turned over because anybody who knows who, who have any wisdom whatsoever, know once you sign up, you can't walk away. And one thing you don't do is turn on the hand that feeds you. And so the hand that was feeding him, because you got to think about all those different people. And I'm going to just say that was been missing or taken away. Mm-hmm. You understand? I'll leave it there. And he got away with it. But he can't get away with this because why? He messed with the big boys. He decided to go sue Chirac and decided to sue the big people. Well, it's judgment. And it's judgment. Why? Because once you sell your soul, the Lord is going to bring that ticket full circle. And when it's time to collect, he's ready for you. He's just one of many. But I want you to understand something because... When you do armed security like I do, and that's what one of my buddies, he's actually at a rap thing now doing some videos watching them. When certain, when you get on a certain level, you got to get on the casting couch. If you don't get on the casting couch, you understand, you're not going to go too far. When you get on a certain level, you got to go through the Rainbow Mafia. I'm just put it that way. They're going to always have video of you. They don't do video. They're going to give you a, a little one. And they're going to have some video footage or somebody in your family has to go. 
So there is no easy way through this. And the things that they have to do are horrific. They have to sit around the table and digest things that you guys can never figure, can never imagine in your life. They can't even look in the mirror. Remember we had the one young lady? She said that um, Biggie's ex-wife was in the back seat doing what? She was arguing with a demon. She was talking to one? Arguing. With what? A demon. You see that? She was arguing with one. These people fighting a lot of spirits. It was crazy, though. Yeah. She said, you know, meeting these people, I just, she said, I used to look up to these people growing Idolizing. up. Idolizing. That's that idol really uh, idolatry. Yes. They're not that image that was projected. Mm -hmm. And that's everything about this beast system. Right. Everything is about an image they want to project. That's right. To push certain agendas or mm -hmm. whatever, what, what have you. You know what I'm saying? And so this is why the Lord says, that you got to be wise as what? A serpent and gentle as a lamb. Why? If you're not, who, what are these people? They're snakes. They're devil tongues. Yeah. So you got to think like them in order to maneuver through the wilderness around them. But my thing is, if, is, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali said it best, if you got 10 snakes that don't bite you, because I know they're good, good people, but I got another 90 that are poisonous. Do I walk in the house and try to hope that the other 90 don't bite me? Because you got 10 that are good. Mm -hmm. I just rather not go in that room. You got to use wisdom. You got to understand that there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah. And, and, and once you decide that you want the riches of this world, and especially the young kids out here, you youngsters, I deal with a lot of, I've dealt with a lot of young men who got spirits on them because they want the music world. Not understanding that Lucifer controls it. Doesn't the scripture say don't marry a singer? It doesn't say don't marry a singer because she sings. It just says it because the Lord knew that a, a singer would entice you to get you to do things you should because he knew in the latter days and most of them sold their souls. So we got to understand that. So somebody had asked me, though, is singing a sin or wrong? And no. No, it's not wrong to sing, but when it comes to being out there that basically the devil controls the music industry mm -hmm. the mainstream music industry that's where the problem comes in because it's going to conflict with your values a child of the light can't mix with right. children right. of darkness and you're going to be surrounded by that so you know? i'm gonna i'm gonna read Sirac, the book of Sirac 9 4 or four through 14. you want to do you want to go there nine. Uh -huh. the okay. book of Sirac. As a wisdom of Solomon is also called. Chapter 9, mm -hmm. 4 through 14. I'll let you read and I'll go ahead and just elaborate a little bit, Sister Makai. All right. It says, use not much the company of a woman that is a singer, lest you be taken with her attempts. It's with her what? Her attempts. Mine says, don't hang around with a female musician since you might get caught in her advances. Mm. Okay. Because a lot of these women, your Cardi B's, your Biggie, what's that big lady, Lizzo, and all of them, they've made packs behind the scene. And they've already sold their souls. I think one of them came out of and took her tattoos away and all of that. I don't think she was a singer, though. Oh, okay. She was like a reality star. Oh, okay, she's a reality star. Okay. Yeah. It says, don't stare at a young woman since you might in incur punishment for her since you might lose your what? Inheritance. Don't give yourself to prostitutes. Don't look around in the city streets and don't wander in the deserted areas. Go ahead and keep reading, Sister Makai. Verse 8 says, Turn away your eye from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty, for many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. Mine says, Turn your eye away from a shapely woman with a shape. And don't stare at the beauty belonging to someone else. If she's somebody else's woman and you're staring at her, don't do that. Many have gone astray because of a woman's beauty. And out of its affection, flames up a fire. And I, mm. and I thought about it. Right here. King James? Yes, this is my Ciroc. Yeah, I got it from the King James. I'm not sure. I, I copied it from Ciroc, so it has to be. It might be from the Seifert. Mm -mm. Okay, it must be from the King James Version then. The 1611 is what this is saying. Yeah, it's going to give you more latent terms for it. Mm -hmm. So when it says that it might stir up a flame or fire, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of Reuben when he looked at Belha, his stepmom, and he saw her bathing. Right. And he couldn't take it. It kept building up in a built until he had to have her. 
And then he ended up, you understand, doing abominable things by sleeping with his stepmom. And the angel told Jacob right away what happened. And Jacob had to come and he had to pray for his son. You know, if he didn't, you know, he wouldn't have made it. He had affliction in his loins for a long time, too. Verse 9, don't ever sit with a married woman. Did y'all hear that? It says, don't ever sit with a married woman and don't share meals or indulge in wine with her since your soul might be attracted to her and you might slip into destruction because of your passion. Mm, that's worded very You're worded well. worded perfectly. Yeah. This is worded better. This, yes, it is. Much better. You guys got to understand something. You know, my wife used to say a long time ago, well, you know, people go out for meetings, it's business, it's business. And what I used to say to you, Sister Micaiah, all the time. Yeah, these men, they go, that's how they get the women. They want to pretend it's about business just so they can take her in. That's right. And now we're reading it. Mm -hmm. We're reading it. See, see, everything is in scripture, folks. When you're sitting there and you're going out and you're talking about it's just business, business. No, it's never. First of all, a married woman shouldn't even be in the presence of a man by herself. Period. Not his car, not his business, nowhere. Likewise with a married man. If you're a married man, you should not be one-on-one -on -one with a woman. I mean, unless it's your cousin, your sister, your mother, you know, your immediate family. Why? We read it right here. Verse 9, don't ever sit with a married woman and don't share meals or indulge in wine with her since your soul might be attracted to her and you might slip into destruction because of your passion. Verse 10, don't abandon an old friend because newer ones are not their equal. New friends are like new wine. When the, when the wine ages, you will quickly drink it with good cheer, all oh, praises. Don't envy the good reputation of sinners. Don't envy the reputation of sinners since you don't know how suddenly the end will be. Mm -hmm. Don't delight in the success of the ungodly. If they're ungodly as being successful, don't delight in that. You know they're not good people. Get this, it says, don't, don't delight in the success of ungodly. Remember that they won't be considered righteous even in the grave. Man, that's deep. Wow. Man, that's deep. 13, keep far away from people who have the authority to kill and you won't be worried by the fear of death. If you approach them, don't make a mistake or they might take away your life. Be aware that you are stepping among traps and that you are walking on the, and you're walking on the, the parapet. What is this? Where are you at? you're walking on the parapet of the city's walls. Parapet. Is that? You don't have it right here. Look here. See, you can see right here. I know what verse is 13, that I sweetheart. What word? This 13. Is. It's going to read different. It says you're walking on the parapet of the city's walls. Okay. It says snares here. Right. So basically, what it's saying is, you know, if, battlements, if, battlements of the city. Okay. Mine said parapets. But when you guys are around people who can take your life away, and this goes to, you know, we can't be racist. Why? Because we can't change no laws. We can't. We don't have anything to do with the prison systems. We don't have anything to do with um, the religion system right now. You know, we have no power to be racist. Prejudice is something else when well, you don't like someone for their color. But racist means you change laws. You're in charge of the laws. You're in charge of the statutes and commandments of that nation. We have none of that. So we can't do anything when it comes. To that. So but what happens is these people, Remember, you got to be wise as a serpent. These people around us right now, what they'll do is they'll set you up. Because why? They can take your life. Yeah. They can take our lives. Look how many of our people have been taken. So we got to be careful around them. Careful what we do, what we say. Yes, ma'am. It's a true spiritual battle for your soul. Yes. If, if you notice here at verse 6, uh, Sirach 9, verse 6, mm -hmm. give not your soul unto yeah. harlots that you lose not your inheritance. Come on. That's pretty deep. That's deep. You know? And yeah. that's the thing. The world makes light. Yeah. Of what darkness messing with prostitutes, darkness. they make light of fornication, they make light of darkness, you know. Yeah, they they uh praise it as a good thing. This is what well, this is what men supposed to do, so so their royal oats, that's yeah, the saying, yeah, goes. yeah, and them oats fall off too. You later. Know? And but as yeah. you read and study this word, the more you see that everything right. that's pushed and promoted as right. normal are things that the Lord can cost you what. Not just your soul, but yeah. you lose an inheritance. You, you lose your crown. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody steal your crown. If you are a nation of kings and priests, you're a holy people. Why on this earth, now that you're awake right now, would you let anybody steal your crown? We're around the corner from being gathered. 
it's only coming in a moment. All our yeah. souls can feel it. Yeah. Not we 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 feel it. We can feel that the Messiah is near here. We can feel that he's near. We can feel that this earth is going through a change. And now we see that we're awake. Yeah. We're no longer asleep. We're not those dry bones no more. We got sinews and tendons. We're on our feet. And the Lord has put these four winds in us. Yeah. There's no reason for nobody to steal your crown. You got to understand, we are the children of Israel. The Lord says that Yeshua is the line of Judah. Why? Because our people have the, you know, and this is why I'm telling you guys about fear. You see these lions, lions, which represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three lions. You know one thing the Lord said he gave us? He said he gave us the spirit of a lion. He said he doesn't have fear. And if we're in this first image, should we have fear? No. We are the, the our women are like lioness. That's why they, they don't play around. And our men are like lions. That's why everybody is always afraid of us. Mm -hmm. That's why all nations are afraid of us. If we kill giants and then we took out all these nations, they know who we are. So the thing is right now, we got to learn who we are. And if we know who we are, why would you let somebody take your crown? You at work and you got a jerk. Somebody just being jerky to you all the time. But yet you know that you're Israel. You know you're the 12 tribes. And you know that that person is going to be judged by the Messiah. Why? He says, pray for your enemies. If they do something, turn the other cheek. If they take your jacket, give them a coat. Why? Because you can't do anything to them like what he's going to do. You can't do nothing compared to what he's going to do That's to them. That's real. You sitting there thinking you can, but you're thinking small. You're thinking earthly. You see, his judgment is forever. Yours is only temporary. It's like a puff of smoke. It's like a rudder going through a wave. Yeah. As soon as it goes through, the wave goes away. You don't even know the boat was there. This is how this life is. So why are you worried about the dead when you should be worried about the living? Yes. This is what's important. Yes, as much as you can investigate your neighbor and consult with what? Wise people. Know who your neighbors are. Don't just be friendly with everybody. Scriptures say a friend is not made at a card game or at work. A friend is made over time. Time tells you who your friends are. Time will tell you exactly that spouse you got that you met and you've been with it one year. And all of a sudden, two or three years go by. Then you got bones falling out sometime in the graveyard. And then sometimes you realize after four years, I had a diamond in the rough. Man, I was going through the rough period and going through all that. But now the Lord has shown me I got something special here. I just couldn't see it. I was looking at carnal eyes. All I kept thinking about what I didn't have instead of pondering on what I have. Now I realize that the Lord gave me everything I asked. I just didn't realize it. Some people, mm. when they realize it's too late, they've separated from that person. That person's moved on and got a new wife or a new husband. And when that happens, all you do is have remorse. Remember, nobody's perfect. Everybody is privy to sin. The Lord said we sin knowingly and unknowingly. Saying that, that means that nobody's perfect. You got to shake a chisel. You got to yeah. chop off the rough parts. Yep. You got to shake it. You got to go. You're going through the fire. Mm -hmm. This is how you form. A piece of clay is formed with what hands? The Lord said we're clay. But it's got to go through the fire. The fire takes out them impurities. Then you got to wash it with water. That's that word. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's in a cookie cutter. Nobody's the same. You can't be bringing old baggage to your relationships. This is why a lot of marriages don't work. Then a lot of people are trying to go back to the old bag. And then they got some new teachings and learning that I want to fill it with new wine and it bursts. That's why the Lord said if a woman who's married cheats on her husband, she's a contaminated city. He's not to go back. Nine times out of 10, when you go back, a man go back or a woman goes back to a man who ain't right, they, they get worse. They don't get better. The Lord showed it. To, yeah, he said, the Lord said, I speak as one. I speak it twice, but you don't comprehend it. I don't spoke to you, but you couldn't hear me. Then you did hear me. You listened to me and you got rid of the riffraff. But the next thing you know, because you're lonely and this, you will go right back. Folks, you always got to inspect the book. Yes. Open that book up. Know what's in it. But one thing I want you all to do is remember this. Nobody's perfect. Stop dwelling on little things about your spouse. I want you to get a list, write down all the good things about them, and then write all the bad things and see which one adds up. Nine mm -hmm. times out of 10, mm -hmm. the good will out outweigh the bad. Because mm -hmm. why? Nobody's perfect. Most importantly, don't focus on the right. lack or the short. -term. Come on, say that again, Sister McKay. You know, and that's the thing yeah. that a lot of people do. They focus on the shortcomings. What they don't have versus what they have, yeah. as I said. That was 
how Adam and Eve fell. Exactly. I mean, they could eat from right. every tree of the garden except for one. Yep. Then that tree was in the middle of the garden. So they had to walk past right. a whole lot of the trees they could have eaten from to get to that one in the middle. And so instead of going, standing in the promised land, they was kicked out of the promised land. And in order for us to get into the promised land, we have to be what? Obedient. Just like Joshua and Caleb were. They were obedient to the Lord. But the other ones who weren't, they died in the wilderness. Now that he's coming back to take us where? Into the promised land. What should we be? Should we not be obedient? Should we not be listening, following his laws, judgment, statutes, commandments? That way we can, remember, and I'm going to say it again, Moses just said, didn't I give you water? He messed up a little bit and all he could do is look at the promised land, but he couldn't go. We got to be very careful what we say out of our mouths. We got to be very careful that we give the Lord praise and not ourselves. Don't put ourselves on a pedestal. Right. Become puffed up. We got to be very careful that we don't take gain for godliness and start taking from the people and start taking from them to fill our coffers up. Knowing that these coffers and your houses and these buildings are going to go away. But if you're building your treasures in heaven, you have eternal prosperity that will never, ever end. That's what you need to think about. Think about spiritual things. Stop worrying about monetary things that are going to go like a vapor. All this world is passing. Even your flesh is going to pass away. You're going to get immortal flesh. You're going to have a body that you understand can never deteriorate. So let's stop worrying about the small things, and let's worry about saving our souls, as the scriptures say. We're in 2nd Baruch chapter, what were we at, 40, 49 was it? 55 was it? Okay. All right, so we go through these books. We're trying to get through Baruch, because Baruch, who was Jeremiah's secretary, the prophet Jeremiah, he was a scribe. He's the same one that gave us the Sefer. When the people heard the books being read, just like when we first heard our books back from the King James 1611 with the Apocrypha, when we first got Enoch again, we got Jasher and Jubilees. We start crying when the light came. You start crying when you learn the truth. When you first learned the truth, Michelle, what did you do, Sister Kaya? I cried like a baby. Yeah. You know, it's like you're peeling back layers. You know how you peel an onion back? What does an onion make you do? Make your eyes water up. Right. It'll Come make on. you cry. I It'll make it. you cry. That's for real. All praises. The more layers you pull back, the more tears come to your eyes. Because, you know, it's layers of lies, and yeah. then there's also layers to the truth. There you go. But what does the devil do? The devil means what? Satan. The Liar adverse, lie deceiver. deceiver. He'll give you a bit of truth, and then he'll throw a bunch of lies in. So, let's get to some truth. Let's read. Second book, um, chapter 55. And it came just, to... Uh, just to touch on what you uh -huh. just said. Uh -huh. It just hit me. Yes, ma'am. Like, the wordplay is huge with you. Uh -huh. I mean, things. Yeah. And I used this as an example in a previous mm -hmm. lesson. Like, right. for instance, they've come to a point now where women are comfortable walking around in bra and panties. Yeah. And I say that because what is a bikini, right? <laughs> they just call it something different. The Lord sees his daughters material. as being naked. He said being naked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like, yeah. the wordplay is so real. With with the devil and his deceptions, and I remember on so many levels. But that's just that's one true. major example. Yeah, that's the truth, man. I mean, just look at our boys; how they're walking around. I'm I, I work on a, a a detail, and I got young men in the hood, and I got one store. I went and I saw a manager. The manager is about three eighty, you know, nice guy, nicest guy in the world. But man, the boy, he's walking around with his pants down, you know. Then the other manager comes in. He's walking around with his pants down, but he dropped his T-shirt a little bit lower. And then I see all the young boys walking around. I'm like, do they know what they look like to these other nations? Well, do honestly, where did it start? What do you? What's the well, we signal know. behind it? And that's the right. thing, though. They have the same behaviors, but call it something else. Yeah, that's, that's, a, where that's, that's that cloudy day. That's in. that cloudy day. That goes back. The Lord says it's going to be a dark. What does that mean? No laws. Everybody saying the Torah's done and a cloudy day. Everything's distorted. That's what it is. They think what's good is bad and what? Well, bad is good. Romans 1 24. Who changed the truth into a lie? And so these young, when I walk around, I think of me, I always look at them when I see his daughters going into the stores half naked. Or when I see them going into um, buildings half naked and I see the boys with the pants down. Or like my guy said the other day, he saw six young men. Um, he said he's just sitting there. Jeff, Jeff called me, told me this. Mm -hmm. The guy who does the carpet for us. And he said that, um, you know, Lorenzo, D look like some, you know, teenage, you know, they were like teenagers, you know, young, young, you know, black, you know, colored boys. And 
He said, but they look all, you know, like young buck men. He said, but I seen the other one tap the other one. And the next thing you know, they was just start holding each other's hands and all. He said, <laughs> he said, you know, and it kind of threw me, you know. And, you know, he said, just threw me off because he didn't expect that. So saying that, what I'm saying is everything right now is kind of turned around the way things are done. Yeah. And so saying that, you know, the Lord is looking at all of this. He's looking at his men. He's looking at his women. And right now he's judging. This is why a lot of these youngsters have spirits on them. They're talking to themselves. They're going through roller coasters and they can't figure out why. They're sitting there. Every time you turn around, they got no peace. And then what do they do? They want to bring you that drama. But you know what with me? I'm going to tell you just like this here. If anybody out there try to come at me with drama, I don't care if it's my mama, brother, sister, cousin. I cut them off. And that's keeping it real. 1,000. Now, I love my mom. Thank you, Lord. I ain't never had to deal with my mama because my mom and me, no matter what, I love her too much. And my dad. But I'm just telling you how deep it goes if, I, if it was to that point where my peace was being taken. Not stop loving or none of that. But just love. You ever heard that saying? You can love some people at a distance. Does that make sense? Thank the Lord I have a great relationship with my mother and my father. My dad. I have a great relationship with my dad also. Also, when it comes to children, when it comes to people in your family, when it comes to so-called friends, which I call associates because friend is a strong word. If people are not right, if they're not right and they're bringing drama to you, you know, even if it's on your job, you speak, you smile, but you keep it moving. Don't let them come into your realm. Don't entertain them. Don't just don't deal with them. You ever heard on the phone? They got this thing. You know what it's called? You know what it's called, Sister Micaiah? What? It's called block. <laughs> y'all ever seen that thing called block? Real, on the phone? It's B-L-O-C-K if y'all don't know what it's spelled. <laughs> it's in red. Block them. They, I'm going to ask you a question. If it's every time you... Drama, come on. Like, if, if every time you go around certain people and you go like this, you're on a roller coaster. Every time you go, you're on a roller coaster with them. There's no peace. You know what I always say? If you don't put the cart on the roller coaster, how in the hell can you go on the ride? That's right. Don't put the cart on the roller coaster. Come on. I don't even give them a chance to come my way with all that drama. Once I see you ain't right, I take flight. Now I understand why the prophets would separate from yes. the people. Now I understand why they would leave for a day or two or sometimes two or three. When you know how the most high works and then you see the ignorance amongst our people, it makes you not even want to be around them. Not just our people, but the world. It really does. It makes you want to be secluded. But the Lord has put a spirit in me to love my people and to make sure I want to feed them. Because if he fed me this wisdom and if I can share it, you know, as my barber said today, he said, brother, I just want to thank you, you know, for shedding light on the people. Thank you for feeding the people. And I've had so many people thank me and thank my wife mm -hmm. for us feeding the people this wisdom. But it's not us. And I want y'all to really hear me. And I want y'all to hear me with impurity. And this is the most high in the Holy Spirit. This is what Yeshua left on the earth. And what he does is he fills you with the Rowak Hokadesh when you do lessons so that you have understanding. That's why we don't rehearse any lessons. We don't even know what most time we're going to do. We just do them. And the Lord does the rest. This is how he fills us so that we can bring light to the world. All of you guys out here got gifts. That's yeah. why it's so important to teach these babies. So if we can get them at a young age. Remember, we had to examine them at 10 years old. That's what we did and our ancestors did. And remember, if they were priests at 20 years old, you understand they was examined again, 25. They, they couldn't take office as a priest at 25. That was under the letter of the law. But under the letter of the law, it was something else, which was carnal, Old Testament. At 75 years old, the priest had to retire. Why? Because a man loses his mind at that age. He stops thinking and forgetting things. But we're under the spiritual law now. Did it not say that Yeshua is a king, a priest, and a prophet under the order of Melchizedek? Did it not say we are a nation of kings, priests, and prophets? We're under the order of Melchizedek. We're not under the letter of the law. We should be doing things in the spirit. That's why Yeshua brought the Holy Spirit here. So we can do things because we convicted. You should be convicted now. Where before you was just a law, you, you were just scared if somebody saw you. But I want you to understand the Lord's eyes are 10,000 times bright in the sun. He knows every hair on your head. As Jeremiah 14 says, I knew you before you came out the womb and I sanctified you before you came out. That's what he told Jeremiah. Just like he told us we his firstborn. He knew us before we came out the womb. Why do you think you see these babies coming out the womb when a, when a spiritual song come up, they got their hands up. They've just been born. 
but they praising the Lord. They got their hands up praising the Lord. I know y'all have all seen it. You know why they doing that? Because they just left him. Mm -hmm. The Israel. We just, he said he gave our spirits to who? Yeshua. Yeshua brought them where? Here. To be tested. Y'all being tested. It's not where you've been. And I want to stress this. Too many people beat themselves up. I've done this. I've done that. It's not where you've been. It's where you're going. That's what's important. Mm -hmm. We've all made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. Liars, what did Paul say? Liars, effeminates, adulterers. He says all of, all of us was once like that. It's not about what you were. It's where you at right now. Mm -hmm. This is what we need to get. So yeah. I just thank the Lord for bringing us together as a family and waking us up. This is the book of Baruch, Second Baruch, chapter 55. And it came to pass when I finished speaking these words of this prayer, that I sat under a tree that I might rest in the shade of the branches of the branches. And I wondered and was astonished, and I pondered in my thoughts regarding the multitude of goodness which the sinners who are upon the earth have, re have rejected, and regarding the great torment which they have despised, though they knew that they should be tormented because the sin that they had committed. And when I was pondering these things, and the like, lo, it says, when I was pondering these things, and the like, lo, the angel Ramiel, who presides over the true visions, was sent to me. So Ramiel is over what, says Micaiah? True visions. True visions, a clear visions. And he said unto me, why does your heart trouble you, Baruch? And why does your thoughts disturb you? For if owing the report which you have only heard of judgment, you are so moved to what you will be when you shall see. It says, you are so moved. What will you be when you shall see the manifest see it manifest with your eyes? And if with this expectation, where if you do expect the day of El Elohim, you are so overcome, what will you be when you shall come to this event? And if the world, and if the word of the announcement of the torment of those who have done foolishly, you are so wholly distraught, if you so distraught over that, or these people done things foolishly. How much more when the event will reveal the marvelous things? We got marvelous things for you, but you sitting there worrying about these foolish things and these foolish people. You need to be pondering on those beautiful, wondrous, marvelous things coming. Get this. And if you have heard tidings of good and evil things which are then coming and are grieved, what will you be when you shall behold what the majesty will reveal, which shall convict these and cause those to rejoice? That's deep. He said that majesty that's going to come going to cause you to be convicted and rejoice. I says, okay, I'm hot, sweetheart. You are. I'm burning up. My wife is cold. I'll be burning up, man. I'm comfortable. That's why I use this space heater because she, I'm hot, baby. You got to turn that down, sweetheart. You know, I hold a lot of heat, plus I'm in the spirit. So I'm going to be yeah. picking up more heat. Mm -hmm. The Lord's got in me. I'm going to be picking up more heat. In here. Nevertheless, oh. because you have besought El, this is the second Baruch, chapter 56. Nevertheless, because you have besought El Elyon to reveal to you the interpretation of the vision which you have seen, I have been sent to tell you about this vision. And El Elohim has assuredly made it known to you the methods of the times that have passed and of those that are destined to pass in his world from the beginning of his creation, even unto his consummation of those things which are deceit and of those things which are what? Truth. truth. Is he not doing that I'm now? giving you both what's deceit and what's truth. For as you did see a great cloud which ascended from the sea and went and covered the earth, this is the duration of the world which El Elohim made when he took counsel to make the world. And it came to pass when the world had gone forth from his presence. Word. Excuse me, Shalakia. When it came to pass when the word had gone forth from his presence that the duration of the world had come into being in a small degree. So he spoke it, he spoke it, and was established according to the multitude of the intelligence of him who sent it. And as you did previously see the summit of the cloud black waters, which descended previously on the earth, this is a transgression which with Adam, the first man, transgressed. For since when he had transgressed, untimely death came into being. Grief was named and anguish was prepared and pain was created and trouble consummated and disease began to be established and Sheol kept demanding that it should be renewed in blood. 
and the beginning of the it says and the begetting of children was brought about and the passions of parents produced and the greatness of the and the greatness of man was humiliated and goodness languished Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, Go ahead. this goes back mm -hmm. to what I said about Adam and Eve thinking, oh, it's yeah. no big deal. If we do this, if we take eat mm -hmm. off this, this fruit, that, right. look at all the results that came right. from, in the spirit realm from that. Just this that one transgression. We have to be so careful about things. We one do. transgression, folks. Y'all yes. get this? We got to yes. be careful about everything we do. This is why the Lord said my people perish for lack of knowledge. Yes. So we need to get this knowledge so we don't do these little things. So when it's time for him to come back and he's looking for you to have oil in your lamp, you don't have weeping and gashing of teeth. Look what they've done. All this stuff came about from one transgression. Moses could not get into the promised land. He looked north, south, east, and west. He could look, but he couldn't go because of one thing he said, did I not give you water from that rock? Folks, be careful what you say, and whatever you do, don't ever take credit for what the Most High does. Ever. Well, the thing too that we yeah. seem to think is not a big deal. Man, come on, our minds are not like the Most no, High. No, they're not. He's He's a spirit, so we need to worship in what? Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. We just said that. Hmm. Verse seven. This is Second Baruch, chapter fifty-six, verse seven. What therefore can be blacker or darker than these things? Right. This is the beginning of the black waters which we have seen. And from these black waters, again, were black derived, and the darkness of darkness was produced. For he became a danger to his own soul, even to the angels became he a danger. Mm. Wow, because he's over the angels. This is why he's saying that. Because by him doing it, now the angels are going to say, you know what? If he's over things and we got to obey him, we can do it too. Even the angel's soul became a danger. Get this. Even the angels became his, came he a danger. It's deep. It says, for moreover, at that time when he was created, they enjoyed liberty, and some of them descended and mingled with the women. And then those who did so were tormented and chained. Because if he wouldn't have done those things, the women would have never been him for him to, for them, the angels to come down and even them sin. They would have never sinned. So if Adam wouldn't have done this, and my wife just went over, you see all the things that happened by him sinning? Even the angels became in contempt because of what Adam done. This is deep. So everything happens because of who? Us. In the earthly realm and in the spirit realm. You know, another thing deep. I want to re-emphasize. Yes, yes. You said this before. Mm -hmm. Notice in verse 5. Yes, ma'am. Again, it says, because Adam sinned. Right. It didn't say because of Eve yeah. all this stuff yeah, happened. Yeah. It was because of the man. Yeah. And that's another thing with our men out here who have all this hate for women and want to blame everything on the women. The Lord look at y'all. He don't be slitting the women. He, he don't get me wrong. Our women breed saints, but you're the ones who he looks at and makes judgment on this earth about. I want y'all to get that. It wasn't because of Eve's transgression. It's because of man. Why? That's why the Lord said if the man ain't spiritual, the house ain't spiritual. It says, in verse 11, for moreover, at that time when he was created, they enjoyed liberty. They enjoyed what, Sister Micaiah? Freedom, liberty. And now we're under the law of what, Sister Micaiah? Liberty. What does that mean, Sister Micaiah? We're free from the law of sin and death. And we're free from what? The, we're free from that the carnal law, law, the letter of the law. That was the law of sin and death. Now we have what? That was a curse. That was a curse us. for us. But now we got the roll while coca death of the Holy Spirit convicting us. Well, we He's, can repent. Now we can repent now. Now we can go ahead after we repent. You understand? Now we get a grace period to get it right. That's what that refining. We go through the fire and back to the water, through the fire and back to the water, through the fire and back to the water. That's that grace period. Yeah. And if we do it right, when Yeshua comes back looking for his bride, guess what? You'll have oil in your lamp. This is what this means. Let's get this. Verse, verse uh, 12, and some of them descended and mingled with the women, and then those who did so were tormented in chains. But the rest of the multitude of angels, which there is no number, restrained themselves. And those who dwelt on the earth perished together with them through the waters of the deluge. These are the black first waters. Sister so Micaiah, go ahead, 57. All right, Second Baruch 57, verse 1. This is an apocryphal book. I don't mm -hmm. know if we mentioned that. Yes. It says, and after these waters, you did see bright water. This is the fount of Abraham. 
also his generations and advent of his son and of his son's son and of those like them. Because at that time, the unwritten Torah was named amongst them. Mm. And the works of the commandments were then fulfilled. Yes. And belief in the coming judgment was then generated. And hope of the world that was to be renewed was then built up. Of the world that was to be what? Renewed. This is nobody's going to heaven. You've been lied to with Christianity. That's not in scripture. The scripture says in Revelation 21 that the earth is going to be what? renewed the heavens and the earth and there's a new kingdom coming down to the new earth 12 gates 12 angels with fiery swords just like garden of eden and 12 names of israel written on the top it's for our people go ahead and read i'm still on verse two at the bottom it says and the promise of the life that should come hereafter was implanted it was what implanted come on what does that mean sister mckay on my whole ride in sinai what do he do well, this is even before that. Right. Let me see what we got here. Oh, Renew okay. no, no, no. Where he implanted his no, word. No, in no, us. This the he's, this, no, right. no. This is when he's no, no. This is when he's talking about he implanted the Torah in us. Yeah. This is on Mount Horite and Mount Sinai. Yeah. Where we had shaking knees and all. And the Lord said, I'm gonna do something with you. I'm gonna implant this word in you. Yeah. So when we read it in Hebrew, it means he what engrafted it in us. Yeah. So when we hear it right now, like we hear it, it's, it's a confirmation, confirmation what you already know. Yeah. This is what this is saying as we speak. Go ahead and yeah. keep reading, please. It says, these are the bright waters which you have seen. But mm -hmm. see, notice too how I said things right. are coming back full, full circle. circle. Right. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not have the written law. No. But it says, because mm -hmm. at that time, the unwritten Torah was named amongst them. Right. They lived righteously that's right. without it being written. Because okay? that's were... how we need to be living. That's it. That's Following it. Following their example. That's it. It's in us. It's in us to do right. You know what? But what's happening? Your flesh is taught the contrary. Yeah. But your spirit is in your spirit to do right. Yeah. That's why the spirit and the flesh war against each other. Yeah. The spirit doesn't want to do it because the Lord's saying don't do it. And that's when you get convicted. But the flesh said, man, please, I ain't did this in so long and I want this and I want that and I got to have it. Yeah. No discipline. This is one of the main reasons why you should fast. Fasting teaches you discipline. How to do without. How to flick the, flick the body so you feed the soul. This is why we have to learn to fast, folks. Fasting and prayer avail much. And as the scriptures say, some demons and spirits, you can't get away. You can't get rid of them unless you fast and you pray. You got to do both at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Sister McGuire. Verse 58, verse 1, it says, And the black third waters which you have seen, these are the mingling of all sins. Some sin? All sins. All the sins combined together. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which the nations afterwards wrought after the death of those righteous men. What did the nations do? They basically were very sinful. And they taught it to who? After Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And who did they died? teach it to? Us. They taught it to us. We've been yeah. doing a lot of sinful things. Yeah. Because we've been in three days of darkness, no law. Three days without mm -hmm. the light of the Torah. So for 3,000 years, we've been in darkness. Why do you think that we was numerous as the sands of the sea, but now we're a remnant? Yeah. Then the Lord says, when you go into darkness, just like we had the three days of darkness, when we was on the carnal laws, there was three days of literal darkness. We lost thousands of people. We buried a lot of bodies after those three days. Just like these three days we've gone through for 3,000 years, we buried a lot of bodies. Yeah. It's, you you got to come back to the light of the Torah. You got to come back to this lamp. Otherwise, I'm telling you right now, you would not have any oil. And this is not the time to play, man, because this is truly a dark day. Um, where are we at? Second Baruch chapter 58. Uh -huh, I'm still on verse one. Go ahead. In the middle. It says, and the wickedness of the land of Mitzrayim, wherein they did wickedly in the service, wherewith they made their sons to serve. Yes. Nevertheless, these also perished at last. Mm hmm. And the bright fourth waters which you have seen are the advent of Moshe and Aaron and Miriam and Yahusha, the son of Nun, and Caleb, and of all those like them. Yes. For at that time, the lamp of the eternal Torah shone on all those who sat in darkness. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Everybody keeps thinking that the three days of darkness, now that we're in the spiritual part of the scriptures or the new covenant, they keep thinking it's the old covenant when it was three literal days of darkness. I need you to read that last part again, Sister Micaiah. It says, for at that time, the lamp of the eternal Torah. What is the lamp? What is the lamp? 
of the eternal Torah. The Torah is the first five books of what? The law. Mm -hmm. If you don't know them, you do not know the Lord. Most people have been taught these days that the laws are done what? Away. Wait, wait. Even though Yeshua said, I didn't come to do away with the laws, not one dot, one tittle. I can't fulfill them. Y'all been taught wrong. If you don't, if you don't follow the laws, then how can you sin? What is sin? Not following the laws. <laughs> Folks, it's not rocket science yeah. here. But you've been taught by these Gentiles, as we just read, that all this is done away with. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why we lost so many of our people. When they came into the marriage, man, our people worshiped the snake gods, all types of different, different wood gods of wood and stone, baking temples and step pyramids. These different gods had nothing to do with Israel. Sacrificing their children. Sacrificing their children to Baal, putting the fire up, and next thing you know, throwing their babies on it. So that's why the Lord allowed the Europeans to come in. He allowed them to take our land. He allowed them to make us last. He said, I'm going to make the first last and the last first. That's what he did. He allowed, mm -hmm. not by force, not by might, but he did all of this with the spirit. He made us spiritually drunk. But man, it sure feel good to have some of that spiritual uh, mm -hmm. coffee right now in my hand. Because I'm awake right now. Oh, sure praises. Enough. Eyes are wide open, wide open, bucking. Bucking, boy, I got this knowledge. All praises. Well, we have Sister Kaya, second book, chapter 59, verse 59. I'm still in verse two. Go ahead. It says, For at that time, the lamp of the eternal Torah shone on all those who sat in darkness. Yes. Which announced them that believe the promise of their reward. Yes. And to them that deny the torment of fire, which is reserved for them. What's reserved for them? The torment of fire. They're going to ride that river of sulfur. Go ahead. Verse three. But also the heavens at that time were shaken from their place. And those who were under the throne of Elohim were perturbed when he was taking Moshe unto himself. Yes. For he showed him many admonitions together with the principles of the Torah and the consummation of the times, as also to you. Yes. And likewise, the pattern of Zion and its measures. Yes. So the everything. Yes. Of which the sanctuary of the present time was to be made. Yes. But then also he showed to him the measures of the fire, also the depths of the abyss, and the weight of the wind. Yes. And the number of the drops of rain. The number of what? <laughs> the drops of he rain. He showed him the number of the drops of rain. This wow. is deep. Go ahead. And the suppression of anger. The suppression of what? Anger. Come on now. And the multitude of long suffering. Come on now. And the truth of judgment. Come on now. And the root of wisdom. Mm. And the riches of understanding. Mm. And the fount of knowledge. Yes. And the height of the air. And the greatness of paradise. And the consummation of the ages. And the beginning of the day of judgment. Yes. And the number of the offerings. And the earths which have not yet come. And the what it was not come? Wow. And then he said, now, I, I don't know if y'all caught that. I want you to read that again. Now, I want to say this for a reason. Mm -hmm. When you read Baruch, the Baruch, didn't, he, didn't Yeshua say we're gods? Did not Baruch, what did Baruch say we're going to turn into, Sister Mekai? We're going to he surpass what? Surpass the, the uh, angels. And, and we're going to be stars. like what? We're going to be, like no, we're going to be like the stars. We'll be able to shape shift and be mm -hmm. what? Wherever we want. That means we'll be able to change and to go wherever we want. And so if he said we're a nation of kings and priests, he said another thing. There's going to be many earths. Go, go, read that again. Okay, I'm on verse nine. There's gonna Second be there's gonna be more what? Nine, verse nine. It says, and the number of the offerings and the earths, earths, plural, earths, which have not yet come. There's gonna be more than one earth. Did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? This now, is what the Most High showed to Moses. This is what He showed to Moses. That's what this angel is. This is why him. one man is gonna have a thousand children. You may not even be here. You may be on another earth. But you're going to reign and have lands and beautiful. See, this is spiritual. See, everybody's thinking carnal. He said the earths, not earth, that have not yet come. Mm. Y'all hear this? That's deep. I don't know if they caught that. So I, I just, just, <laughs> I just wanted them. I, I just want, some, I want, I, I, I want them to cons, understand the levity of I this. See some cons and guesses on. I, I, I want to see the levity. If you know that you're a oh, nation of kings too. and priests, and that you're the heir. Why these nations don't want to give you nothing? You're not going to just be in charge of this earth, but earths, many of them. Let's keep reading, please. All right. It says, verse I got to write that in my precept. Uh-huh. 59, verse 9. Hold 59, on. 59, verse 9. That's the precept, folks. All you guys in the precept book, more earths, write it down. I'm going to write it down as we speak. 
Because if you don't do it when you come across it, you will not remember. Mm -hmm. This is how you study. Um, more earths. Plural. Um, this is second Baruch. Uh-huh. 59 verse 9. Second Baruch. Uh, we are all right, UK. All right, 59. Because I was looking for this. Verse 9. All praises. So now... I see it. I'm going to make sure I put it in my preset book. You guys should be having, everyone here should have a notepad on their, their on their phone. Everyone here should have also an e-sword, E-S-W-O-R-D, so that you can go ahead into the Strongs and look at what these words mean. And you should also be having a Cipher or King James 1611 on your phone. So when you're reading or you're getting a precept, I want you to copy. And then if you're not sure about something, you go to your e-sword and see what a word means. It's going to be in Greek or it's going to be in Hebrew, but it's going to give you the breakdown. Also, to give you parallel scriptures. And it also, if you put in one title, it'll give you all precepts with it. The e-sword is a tool. That's why it's called a sword. It cuts the word. Get those three tools. And whenever you come across a precept that stands out when you're studying, you copy, paste it, and make a precept notes. Now, I implore you to also write these down because there's going to be times you won't be able to get on your phone or these computers, I'm sure. So I implore you to have paper. My wife, strong believer in paper. Yeah, strong believer, you know, and she's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But this is how you study when we come across certain verses. I want you guys to go ahead and get your precept books out. So now, when you come across family or friends or people who want milk and they come to you and say, you know, what color is your shoe? Well, Revelation 1 14. Well, what is sin? You know, so, you know, first John 3 and 4. Uh, you know, I mean, you just where, start, where do it say it's gonna be multiple earths? Where's well, gonna be multiple earths? Okay, go. second like, Baruch, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Chapter uh, 59, was it? Mm -hmm. Chapter verse 59, nine. verse 9. Now you know. Yeah. This is how you get this wisdom up. You can't remember everything. Now, I got a thousand precepts or so in my head. Thousands. I know. I remember. But there's thousands I don't remember. And this is why you Google it real quick or you don't know. You go to Google. You put in whatever you're thinking. And then you'll, you'll see a precept. Now, sometimes when you got the Strongs, I mean, when you got the Book of Jasher or Jubilees or Enoch, it may not quite be there. And this is when you have to be a little learned or you just, when you Google it enough, most stuff come up though, doesn't it? Yeah. For the most part, right? As far as the scriptures? Yeah. 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 Come You'll up. come up where you know where they're at and which different books. But this is, I mean, mm -hmm. some of them apocryphal books. Right. Um, it's, it's a little harder. Some yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Some of them yeah. don't come up. All right. We're in second book, chapter 59, verse. Verse 10. Go ahead. It says, in the mouth of Sheol and the station of vengeance and the place of belief, and the region of hope and the likeness of future torment, mm. the multitude of innumerable angels, yeah. and the flaming hosts, and the splendor of the lightning, yes. and the voice of the thunders, and the orders of the chiefs of the angels, and the treasuries of light, and the changes of the times, and the investigations of the Torah. Investigations of what? Of what is, the Torah. What's investigation of the Torah mean? Studying. Studying the book. Studying it. Go ahead. These are the bright fourth waters. Which you have seen. No oh, praises. What we got here? I'm going to read. Second Rook 60. Second Rook chapter 60. And the black fifth waters which you have seen remaining are the works which uh, which the Emiram wrought and the spells of their enchant, en, enchant, 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 incantations, incantations, which they wrought and the wickedness of their mysteries and the mingling of their pollution. Hmm. But even Israel was then what? polluted by sins in the days of the judges, though they saw many signs which were from him who made them. We see all these signs right now. Everybody can see everything the Lord made. It was written back then too, folks. We see all these signs who made us. We see the heavens being different now. The sun, two suns in the sky in the middle of the day. You got a moon sitting here with two other moons on the side of it. You got uh, in certain areas, you got the sky lighting up all types of colors. They call it an aurora. We see all these things that the Lord lives, but yet nobody's reverencing him. Nobody's reverencing him whatsoever. But instead, you'll mingle, you'll cleave to this pollution. Everything is polluted. You'll cleave to this pollution. Physically. Even yeah. though the Lord has given us a blueprint on what's clean, and then he gives us a blueprint on what's unclean. Yeah. Just like he gave it to us with the food, just like he gave it to us with life. But everybody wants to follow what? The desire and the lust of their own heart. That's the problem. A lot of people know the truth, but ain't no truth in them. This is sure describing today. It's describing today, these, 1,000. These demons are the Emmerine, the same thing as yes. them demons. That's it. 
They um, got everybody under a spell. Everybody. Huh? So many under a spell. Second Baruch, I believe chapter 60, was it? Verse 61, two? Well, 61 verse, now, okay. Uh, and the bright six waters which you did see, this is the time which David and Sol Solomon, it says, when De it said, this is the time which David and Shalma was born. And there was at that time a building of Zion and the dedication of the sanctuary and the shedding of much blood of the nations that sinned then and many offerings which were offered then in the dedication of the sanctuary and peace and tranquility existed at that time and wisdom was heard in the assembly and the riches of understanding were mingled in all the assemblies magnified Sh Shalakia. And the riches of it says, and the riches of, and understanding were magnified in the assemblies, and the holy feasts were fulfilled in blessedness and in much joy. And the judgment of the rulers was then seen to be without guile, and the righteousness of the prophets of El Elyon was accomplished, was accomplished with truth. And the land which was then beloved by Yahuwah, and because its inhabitants sinned not, it was glorified beyond all lands. And the city Zion ruled then over all lands and regions. These are the bright waters which you have seen. So it was bright when we ruled and Solomon ruled and Samus, you know, when David ruled and then Solomon was born. This is when the laws were being followed. This is when everybody knew the Lord and they reverenced him with a fear. Everybody had the fear of the Lord, which was wisdom. This is when it was bright waters. Can you imagine living back then? When we they said when when Queen of Sheba went to visit Solomon, did they said that. Solomon's kingdom was so beautiful that she thought one of his guards was Solomon. She couldn't believe it. The way he was dressed, he was dressed in pure gold. She thought that was Solomon. Mm -hmm. But she found out all of his guards were like that. But when she saw Solomon, she said she'd never in her life seen anything like him. His crown, his, his kingdom, the golden lions that sat before him, the throne inlaid with gold and silver, diamonds and rubies everywhere. Everything in the temple completely laid in gold, angels' wings touching each four corners. You got cherubims and you got bo uh, boats in there that was inlaid with nothing but pure gold. Mm -hmm. You had pure columns of brass made. That was well, about 40, 40 tons of she 40 shekels. You know, just beautiful brass handmade. Because we had different tribes that were just, they were specialized in brass, some in silver, some in gold. We had locksmith, goldsmith. Man, we had a civilization that was beautiful. That was a beautiful time to live in. Yes, indeed. And that's what we're going back to. Mm -hmm. that's where we headed again Ooh. not only that notice how it says these people heard wisdom in the assembly and were rich with understanding, understanding. It says, that is what's missing today it says that understanding was mean it was magnified <laughs> magnified in the monks assemblies yes. I mean everybody knew because one would speak the other one would speak it's like when Job had these three men before him and they spoke eloquently then the other one speak even more eloquently then you got another one this is why Josephus came into what we would call popularity because he was so uh, articulate with his speech. Yeah. We would use words like an artist would use a word and paint a picture. You know, our speeches were beautiful and the wisdom was magnified. It's beautiful. Um, where are we at here? Um, verse, verse five. Three. Verse five. Oh. It says, and the holy feasts were fulfilled with blessedness and in much joy. And the judgment of the rulers was then seen to be without guile and righteousness of the precepts of the El Elohim was accomplished with truth. Verse 7, and the land which was then beloved by Yahuwah, and because of its in inhabitants sinned not, it was glorified beyond all lands, and the city Zion ruled then over all lands and regions. These are the bright waters which you have seen. I just read, I just read it again. 62. Uh -huh, but understand, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. because they were rich in understanding, yes. they did not sin. No, they no. understood the magnitude of it. Right. And this is why a lot of times when you go to like Paul's writings and others, and they talk about pork and pig and all of that, these men didn't do this stuff anyway. They didn't eat these things. So that's why when you start talking about it to them, it's no conversation because we don't even do those things. This is deep. We were walking up right then. We've been walking upside down ever since. You sure left this earth. We've been walking upside down. We walk on our hands, not our feet. And someone was asking me because they were reading in Second Baruch and they mm -hmm. were talking about the city of Zion. Right. Somebody was asking me, mm -hmm. "What is that?" And so that's oh, what yeah. it is. It's like it, is, the, yeah. it was like the, our beautiful. capital, really. It was beautiful, man. It was just yeah. it's amazing. And the thing is, is that it was a holy, righteous city, and iniquity could not come through there. 
And if it was, it was judged by the letter of the law. You were judged right then. There was no if and buts about it. Two people saw you do someone right, you had to go. Why? Because our people understood, just like when Joshua surrounded Jericho, and we surrounded Jericho seven days, and shouted, walls fell. But what did the Lord tell us? Don't take the cursed thing. But Akon got greedy and he took the cursed thing. And what happened? We lost 40 people in the next battle. Because back then we walked in righteousness. And when there was unrighteousness, we all suffered. So what we do, we would all gather together and stone them and get rid of that, that, that sickness out of us. I call it that fruit, that bad fruit. We would get rid of it and burn it and put stones upon it. And that's what happened with Akon and his family when they decided, when well, Akon took the accursed thing in Jericho, and next thing you know, we lost people. When they cast lots, they found out it was him, and they burned him and his family and put stones. And then the sin stopped from our people. We're a righteous nation. Where we at, Sister Verse 8. Okay. Well, you reading to me? 61 verse 8. You was reading. Okay, these are the black. You sure we uh, came on the half because they were many sins? No. No, we haven't read this. We on 62? 61 verse 8. These are the bright. I already waters. did that. I already read that. We're on oh, 62. No, 62. We're on 62, one. sweetheart. It's on you. All right. And the it's black you, seventh waters, which you have seen, this is the perversion brought about by the council of Jeroboam mm -hmm. or Jeroboam, as some versions say, who right. took counsel to make two calves of gold. Yeah, man. And all the iniquities which kings who were after him iniquitously wrought. Yes. And the curse of Jezebel. And the worship of idols, which Yasharel practiced at that time. Yes. And the withholding of rain and the famines, which occurred until women eat of the fruit of their wombs. Now, what does that mean? Wow. Well, they were eating their babies. Well, back then when the city was surrounded in 70 AD, and this is when one of the women came to the king and said, "My, this woman, you know, I'm, I'm upset. He said, speak. What did she do? And she said, we ate my baby, but when it's time to eat hers, she wouldn't do it. And this one, he said, oh, my goodness, it's written that we, our people will be eating their children. So these things happened to our people. They started actually eating their own children when hunger set in. Go ahead, Sister Micaiah. Second Baruch 62, verse 5. It says, in the time of their captivity, which came upon the nine tribes and a half, because they were in many sins. This is the time of Hosea. And Shalmaneser, king of Asher, came and led them away captive. Mm -hmm. But regarding the other nations, it was it were tedious to tell how they always wrought impiety and wickedness and never wrought righteousness. Never. These are the black seventh waters which you have seen. Mm -hmm. And the bright eighth waters which you have seen. This is the rectitude and uprightness of Hezekiah, king of Yehuda. And the grace of Elohim, which came upon him. Mm -hmm. For when Kansharif was stirred up in order that he might perish, and his wrath troubled him in order that he might thereby perish, for the multitude also of the nations which were with him. When moreover it, Hezekiah the king heard those things which the king of Asher was devising, that he was coming to seize them and destroy his people, the two and a half tribes which remained. Nay, say more, he wished to overthrow Zion also. Then Hezekiah trusted in his works and had hope in his righteousness and spoke with El Elohim and said, Behold, for lo, Cancerib is prepared to destroy us, and he will be boastful and uplifted when he has destroyed Zion. And El Elohim heard him, for Hezekiah was wise, and he had respect unto his prayer. Because he was righteous. So the Lord will have respect to your prayers when you start walking righteously. When you don't do what the Lord say and you don't know this Torah, you don't know the books of the laws, you don't understand which were done away with law of sacrifice. But yet now he says it's not about if you do it with adultery, it's if you think it. If you don't know even the way he thinks with the new modification mm -hmm. and the old laws that were never done away with, you will never, ever, ever have the Lord hear your prayers. You'll go to them, you'll talk to them, but when you are doing sinful things, look how many people we lost in the last three days, 3,000 years. We've lost hundreds of millions. Why? Because they did not hearken unto the Lord, and darkness came on them. When darkness comes on you, Satan will steal you away. Yeah. And this is what's been happening with our people, even to this day. And even more so today, because today is in gross darkness right now. Gross darkness. You know, and it's important to understand that 
he was considered righteous by the standards Standard. of yep. the Most High, not of his own standards. That's right. It's so many people that think, well, I think I'm this type of person, and these people yes. think I'm righteous. That's right. You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't matter. What matters is what the Most High thinks. That's right. Okay, verse 6 says, um, 2 Baruch 63, verse 6. And thereupon El Elohim commanded Ramiel, his angel, who speaks with you. And I went forth and destroyed their multitude, the number of whose chiefs only was 185,000. Mm. And each one of them had an equal number at his command. Mm. And at that time, I burned their bodies within, but their raiment and arms I preserved outwardly. So Ramiel... Because the king went to the Lord, this angel did something. He made sure that you knew it was him and these other nations did. He didn't burn their bodies from out. The clothes stayed. He burned their bodies from the inside. This was spiritual. 185,000 men. No, 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 no. It was 185,000, but each one of them had the same exact number behind them. Read that again. Oh, and each one of them had an... Oh, you're right. My there goodness. was a multitude which no man could number. Man. You understand. Wow. One angel did that. It was 700 and some thousand of them died. Wow. Then when you'll learn, when you read Gad with the Philistines, that 900 and some thousand died before, when they camped before David. People didn't understand what happened to the Philistines. But an angel, one fire angel was called. It came through and killed all the Philistines in one night. So you had the 100 yep. and some thousand, but each one of them had an equal amount behind them. That was a multitude which no man could number. But they did number it was 700 some thousand. I remember the wow. account. You know, I read a lot of books. So I remember the account. I think it was mm -hmm. Jash or Jubilees. It gives you the exact number. Gad gives you um, the exact number on the Philistines who died before and David. That's also in uh, Kings and Chronicles, I think. Right. And I think 154 Book Apocrypha. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Verse 8 says, and at that time I burned their bodies within, but their raiment and arms I preserved outwardly mm. in order that the still more wonderful deeds of El Elohim might appear. Well, I just said that, didn't I? Yeah. He wanted them to know it was him. Go ahead. And that thereby his name might be spoken of to Come the on. whole earth. Why is he? Why did he do that? So his name would be spoken. Folks, I want you. It's yeah. his holy name. The Lord wants you all to know, though I who created the earth, who created the birds, mm -hmm. the animals, the trees, the moon, the stars, the sun, the seas, the fish, the, even the air you breathe. I want y'all to reverence my holy name. I'm going to show you something that you've never seen before, just like he's doing with us right now. That's right. We've never seen this resurgence of our people like we've seen. You know what a brother told me today? He said, man, I'm making a pact to speak to my brothers and sisters now. He said, I remember we didn't used to speak to each other. I said, because we were drunk. And we were drunk with not strong wine. He said, but now that I speak, man, it's like a joy and I meet new people, good people. I said, because your spirit is going to bear witness mm -hmm. to theirs. This is the awakening time. This yeah. is the grand sifting time. He's taking a week and putting his storehouse in the chair he's burning up. I said, no, brother, you just in the hour of the grand awakening. This is the time now. Where we at, Sister Micaiah? 2 Baruch 63? 2 Baruch 63, verse 9. Go ahead. And Zion was saved and Jerusalem delivered. Yes. Yasharel also was freed from tribulation. Yes. And all those who were in the Holy Land rejoiced, and the name of El Elohim was glorified so that it was spoken of. Yes. These are the bright waters which you have seen. That's deep there. That's about most high. 64. Mm -hmm. I'm in Second Baruch, chapter 64. And the black knife waters which you have seen, this is all the wickedness which was in the days of Manasseh, the son of Yezekiah, for he wrought much impiety and slew the righteous, and perverted judgment. And he shed the blood of the innocent, and wedded women who, viol who violently polluted, who he violently polluted. Mm -hmm. So basically he was raping them, you know, or, or violently, that's what that is. And it says also he overturned all the altars, and destroyed their offerings, and drove forth the priests, lest they should minister in the sanctuary. And he made an image with five faces. Four of them looked to the four winds and the fourth and the fifth summit of the images as an adversary of zeal of Elohim. And then the wrath went forth from the presence of El Elohim to the intent that Zion should be rooted out as also it befalls in your days, but also against the two tribes and a half went forth a decree that they should also be led away captive as you have now seen. And, to such a degree did the impiety of Manasseh increase 
that it removed the praise of Elohim from the sanctuary. So his denial of the Lord, he delivering his children up. He put his eldest son in the fire and, and put him on. And it says that the Lord left the sanctuary. What's the sanctuary today when we do wrong? What's our what's the sanctuary today? This our, temple, our bodies. Our body is the temple. It said that the Lord left the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Did he not leave Saul immediately when Saul ended up doing what he did with Samuel? Did he not do the same thing with Solomon when he ground up some gas hoppers and he left the Lord and started doing things with this world? When you start doing things with this world, the Lord leave your sanctuary immediately. And today we are the third temple. We are that sanctuary. One thing, man, I don't know about you guys, but I've had younger days without feeling the Lord's spirit doing things not right. Yeah, that's not a good feeling. Mm -hmm. You're on a roller coaster. You be crying all the time, asking the Lord to fix things, and you sorry. You don't know what you're doing wrong. And we the did out of ignorance. We didn't have the Torah. We didn't have the laws. We didn't understand the books. Yeah. So we didn't understand how to have light. So nothing but darkness shined on us. We've all been there. But it's a beautiful thing now, right now, to have this lighthouse on us. This is how bright this light is with this word. It's like a lighthouse shining a bright light on you. And I'm telling you something. When you start seeing this, there's no way you can shut your eyes now. That's right. You'll never shut Can't your eyes. It. Even if you shut your eyes, the light's still going to shine through. Can't unsee it. Can't unsee this. Second book, chapter 64, verse 3, I verse believe. Eight. Verse, is it verse 8? Mm -hmm. it, says for, it says, for though his prayers were heard, when El Elyon, El Elyon finally, when he was cast into the brazen horse, it was cast into the brazen horse, and a brazen horse was melted, and it served as a sign unto him for the full, for the hour. For he had not lived perfectly, for he was not worthy, but then thenceforward he might know by whom finally he should be tormented. For he who is able to do benefit is also able to do what? Torment, torment. you. He can benefit you. Or he can do what else? Torment. He can torment you. And it's a lot of torment. And, and, and a lot of right people now. going through torment. 65. Thus moreover did Moshe act impiously. And though that in his time Elion would not inquire into these things, these are the black knife waters which you have seen. 66. Go ahead, Sister Kaya. All right. Second Baruch 66, verse 1. And the bright tent waters which you have seen, this is the purity of the generations of Yahshiahu, or Josiah, Josiah, king of Yehuda, yes. who was the only one at the time who submitted himself to El Elohim with all his heart and with all his soul. And he was only 18 years old when he started redoing everything, tearing up everything. 18. He came to power at eight years old, I believe. Was that Jeremiah we, we read? Well, Jeremiah from Jeremiah, yes, in we, Jeremiah. We studied this account. Yeah, so, yeah, when Josiah, at eight years old, he became king. And at 18 years old, he started tearing up all the idols in Israel. Mm -hmm. And he became a zeal for the Most High. Go ahead. Verse 2. And he cleansed the land from idols and sanctified yes, all the did. vessels which had been polluted. Yes. And restored the offerings to the altar. Yes. And raised the horn of the holy and exalted the righteous. Yes. And honored all that were wise and understanding. He and honored who? All those are what? All that were wise and understanding. And everybody that was polluted, do you know he not only unalived them? But he burnt their bones in that spot. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And brought back the priests to their ministry. Come on. And destroyed and removed the magicians. Come and on. Chanters and necromancers, necromancers from the land. This is what the Lord is doing right now. Mm -hmm. He's removing from his people the necromancers, the enchanters, the magicians, the ones who do black magic, the ones who do witchcraft, voodoo. Can I give you a reading? Tarot cards, yoga, those who are doing capillero, all these things that bring up what we call evil spirits and a lot of times they're on you you don't even know where they come from because you did it out of ignorance and since you did it out of ignorance mm -hmm. the demons run through you let's keep going please verse three and not only did he slay the impious that were living but they also took from the sepulchers the bones of the dead and burned them oh well there fire. it is right there all oh, praises and the feast and the shabbat Shab shabbatos or shabbats he Shabbat. established in their sanctity and their polluted ones he burnt in the fire and the lying prophets which deceived the people come on these also he burned in the fire this is what the lord see all of this is symbolic of what the lord is doing right now mm -hmm. see the fire is not just a physical fire it's a spiritual fire folks mm -hmm. look at your prophets right now being exposed lying prophets, lying prophets. <laughs> Look I at was them. watching a video the other day. Uh -huh. Somebody sent me and the preacher talking about, oh, uh -huh. yeah, 
the Lord showed me this big famous <laughs> rapper. Oh yeah, yeah, I yeah. I don't know who he is, boy. But let that he gonna die soon. Let, let that be a sign. Come for on, you. man. Come on. Like what, folks? When you see things like this, you laugh at it. Man, you laugh at it because once you have discernment. You can see those who are casting out nothing but bones and there's no fruit in that basket. Because they'll say something in general, what can apply to anything. You know, there's a female so-called prophetess out there. And I'm going to just say this. Everything she'd be saying is already written in scripture. I'm going to leave it right there. A lot of the men can see through it. I don't think the women can. But it's already been written in books and all she do is make it up like she's read it. And I'm going to leave that alone because, yeah. I ain't going to call nobody out. But anyway, I know what the Lord showed me. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So verse four says, and the feast and the Shabbat, he established in their sanctity and their polluted ones, he burnt in the fire and the lying prophets, which deceived the people. These also he burnt in the fire. Yes. And the people who listened to them when they were living, he cast them into the brook Kidron and heaped stones upon them. Mm. And he was zealous with zeal for El Elohim with all his soul. And yeah. he alone was firm in the Torah yeah. at that time, so that he left none that was uncircumcised or that wrought in piety mm. in all the land all the days of his life. Yes. Therefore, he shall receive an eternal reward. What is Josiah going to receive? An eternal He's going to receive an eternal reward. Go ahead. And he shall be glorified with El Elohim beyond many at a later time. Yes. For on his account and on account of those who are like him. Those are like what? Like him. So anyone who's zealous for the Torah, the law, anybody who's saying that the laws are not done away with, as scriptures say, the Lord says in the scriptures that those people are going to come to the light and they're going to have a brighter light. But those who say that the laws are done away with, they're going to have disgrace. Keep reading, please. It says, verse 7, For on his account and on account of those who are like him were the honorable glories of which you were told before, created and prepared. Yes. These are the bright waters which you have seen. Because there's a kingdom prepared for the righteous. There's a kingdom. Second Rook 67, and the, black, and the black 11th waters which you have seen, this is the calamity which is now befallen Zion. Do you think that there is no, no anguish to the angels in the presence of El Elyon, that Zion was so delivered up, and that, lo, the other nations boast in their hearts and assemble before their idols and say, she is trodden down, who oftentimes trod down. She has been reduced to servitude that reducers that reduce others. Do you think that in these things El Elyon rejoices or that the name or that his name is glorified? But how will it serve, serve towards his righteous judgment? Yet after these things shall the, the dispersed among the other nations be taken hold of by tribulation. And in shame shall they dwell in every place. Where will we be? Didn't we just not talk about this? Yep. He said in shame, we would dwell not in some places, just not every just America, place. not just America, but we're scattered to the four corners of the earth. So uh, when he says that we'll be taken from our lands, no matter where you were stationed at, if you take it to another place, this is what Abraham was talking about. Yeah. Because if you learn here, again, it says that we were scattered where? Four corners of the earth. To the four corners of the earth. What number are we on, Sister McKay? Verse six. Verse six. Because so far as Zion has delivered up and Jerusalem laid waste, shall idols be prosper in their cities and other nations and, and, and the vapor of the smoke of incense of the righteousness, which is by the Torah, is extinguished in Zion and in the region of Zion and the region of Zion in every place lo, there is a smoke of impiety, but the king of Babel will arise who has now destroyed Zion. He will boast over the people and he will speak great things in his heart in the presence of El Elyon, but he also shall fall last. But though, but these are what the, the black, black waters, water. verse 68 and the, and the bright 12 waters, which you have seen, this is the word for after these things, a time will come when your people shall fall into what distress so that they shall all run, uh, run the risk to perish together. Nevertheless, they will be saved and their enemies will fall in their what presence. Their enemies will fall in their what? In their presence. We're going to be watching all these people who took us into captivity. 
all these people who won't give us 40 acres in a mule, all these people who oppress us, all these people who give us these so-called miracle medicines that take our people out, all these people who you understand uh, pillage and rape our women and do all these things, all these people who teach our people, our children, how to be vagabonds and how to be talked about. Look how they teach our babies how to walk around, what they think is cool. You know, I was seeing this guy the other day, and matter of fact, I bought a pair of pants. And I bought a pair of pants, and you know how you have a new tag on your pants. You know, and I've seen a young man walking around. I'm like, why is he walking around with a new tag on his pants? That looks so idiotic. I mean, that looks like you just have no wisdom. That's what I'm thinking. So when I got the pants home, I tried to tear it off. The tag is actually sewn into the pants so you can walk around and look like you got a new sticker just walking around. This is what they do with our people. They make us what we look like we're buffoons. I can't say fools, but it's really because we're idiots. Idiots means you're unlearned, don't know no better. But I'm asking you something. If you're walking around with a big tag hanging off your pants, how does that make you look? Now they're sewn in on the children's pants when they walk around. This is how they do our people, folks. I want y'all to get this. Everything they do is so the world looks at us in a different light. When we're children of the light, they want them to look at us with darkness on us. This is why they demonize and, and they give our women certain styles. They look half naked. You know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, and I'm bouncing at this one place and I don't do clubs no more. And I told my buddy, I can't do that no more. I did a favor for him. He needed some guys there who he knew could take care of business. So he asked me to help him. The one of the girls was about 380 pounds. She came in there and looked like a bathing suit for a girl who was size three. Mine, she a 20, she a 29 to 30. Yeah. And you couldn't tell her she wasn't the thing. And then I noticed that Lizzo and these other people that they put out there for our women to imitate, they'll imitate them and not understanding, man, that the Lord has already marked the place for them. Remember we read that, did that lesson and that guy said that the women in hell were being raped repeatedly over and over. These big muscular men, he said it was horrific what was happening to promiscuous women. He said it's on a level, he said, I don't even want to, he said the women caught it, he said they caught the worst. You know, think this of, is deep. Think about this. It's deep. Just in relation to what he yeah. said. Those fallen ones desired the women. women. So what do you think they want down there? This is why this the setup. <laughs> they want you Say, down there. Give it here. Give it here. For eternity, ladies. You see, did you get this, ladies? <laughs> Men, do you get it? It ain't right. just the ladies. It ain't. It's twofold. He just said that the women were getting it worse. Yes. Because the Nephilims of the giants, when they came, what did they do? They raped the women on the earth. This is why the Lord destroyed them. Some of the, some of the women was torn up down there from them raping them. Some of the babies would burst out of their stomach before they even came three months alive because they were so big. This is the same spirit that's in the other world. I want y'all to understand something. And men, the things that he said he saw and these people say they see when they go, not just him, other people when they go down to Sheol, is horrible. It's horrible. You don't, listen, you don't want to be in bondage in this one, but carry the way in the next. That world that's coming is, you got beautiful places for the righteous, so-so for the, uh, you know, the ones who never petitioned, who petitioned the Lord, never denied it, and horrible for those who've been horrible on this earth. Yeah. Even when you're waiting for judgment, that place is horrible. Yeah. I'm in 2 Baruch chapter 68, verse 3, I believe. We're on 70, aren't we? Uh, no, oh, no, no, okay. no, no, sweetheart. Okay. Let me read it again. Second Baruch 68. And the bright 12 waters which you have seen, this is the word. And after these things, a time will come when you shall, when your people shall fall into distress, so that they shall all run and risk to perish together. Nevertheless, they will be saved, and their enemies will fall in their presence, and they will have in due time much joy. See, in time, we've been having much joy. And at that time, and at that time, after a little interval, Zion will again be built and his offerings will again be restored. And the priests will return to their ministry and also the other nations will come to glorify it. This is what's going to happen. That's why the Lord said we're a nation of kings and priests. I want you guys to understand this and keep reading. Nevertheless, not fully as in the beginning, but it will come to pass after these things that there will be the fall of many nations. These are the bright waters which you have seen. Verse mm -hmm. 69. For the last waters which you have seen, which were the dark, which were darker than all than all that were before them, those which were after the twelfth number, 
which were collected together belongs to the whole world. For El Elyon made divisions from the beginning because he all because he alone knows what will befall the earth. This he only knows this. For as as to the Emirates and the impieties, which enormities. excuse me, Shalakia, <laughs> as for the enormities and the impieties which should be wrought before him, for he foresaw six kinds of them, and of the good works of the righteous which should be accomplished before him. For he foresaw six kinds of them beyond those which he should work at the consummation of the age. On his account, there were not black waters with black, nor bright waters with bright, for it is the consummation. All praises to the Most High. Verse 70, Sister Micaiah, please read. All right, it says here, therefore, the interpretation of the last black waters, which are to come after the black. This is the word. Yes, give the Behold, word. Give the word. The days come, and it shall be when the time of the age has ripened, and the harvest of its evil and good deeds has come. Here's where we are. That's where we at right now. That El Elohim will bring upon the earth and its inhabitants, and upon its rulers, perturbation of the ruach or spirit. Yes. And stupor of heart. Stupor of what? Heart. What, is, what is perturbation, right? Let me it wrote it down. What it means? Anxiety or mental uneasiness. That's a lot of anxiety right now. And people's spirit. Yes, their spirit is mentally uneased right now. Mm -hmm. See, these books are telling what's going on right now as we speak. Yes. And what you need to do in order to have peace in these times of no peace. Yes. Go ahead and keep reading, please, Sister Micaiah. It says, verse 3, and they shall hate one another. They shall what? Hate one another. Is that not going on? Keep reading. And provoke one another to fight. Come on now. Is they not doing this right now? Go ahead. And the mean shall rule over the honorable. What's going to rule over the honorable? The mean. The mean man. Go ahead. And those of low degree shall be extolled above the famous. What does he mean, low degree? Oh, my goodness. These are men who are like dogs. These are men who should not have any honor. These are the men who are crawling out of sewers with baby mattresses. These are the men who have high chairs. These are the men who rape women. These are the men who mm. take from the poor. These are the men who steal from the needy. These are the men mm. that you man, call your friend. Right now. Sure enough. These are the men that you call your friends. You call the enemy your friends. These are the people right now that are being exposed. All these people who you like and you looked up to, all the ones who you want to be like, all these people who you thought were exalted, now you're learning that they're nothing but dumb. Yeah, and they control the people that's famous. They control what? The people that's famous. Read that one more time. It says, and those of low degree shall be extolled above the famous. But what? The famous. Those men who are horrible. What is that guy who looked like a little little pokey pig oh, on the man. face? What's uh, his name? The rough Ryan face. Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein. These are low men. Yes. But they control what? The famous. Yes. Y'all yes. see that? They control the famous. But yet you want to idolize Oprah Renfrey and all of them. When well, you find a not she ain't nothing but a high level witch. Mm -hmm. But y'all exalt these people. You exalt those ones who persecute you. Why do you think? These actresses and all that, when they did the color mm -hmm. purple, they said that they were treated worse than Man. the slave masters treated them. They couldn't get no food. They had to share the same trailer. She treated them no worse. Security. No security. And these are stars. She treated them worse than the slave master. Mm. And y'all look up to these people. The Lord said the low are over the, over, over the what, Sister Micaiah? Over the famous. Over the famous. Sure enough. Man. That's why Harvey Weinstein is her best friend. Mm. Don't y'all see them together in a lot of pictures? I want y'all to pick this up. Sure enough. Speak. All right. It says, verse 4, and the many... This is 2nd Baruch, chapter 70, verse 4. Uh -huh. And ahead. the many shall be delivered into the hands of the few. Yeah, come on now. And those who were nothing shall rule over the strong. The, the ones who are what? Who were nothing. Did we not kill the giants? Did we not, when Joshua killed 31 nations? So who was the strong? We are. we are the strong yes. who are the strongest people on earth who are the fastest people on earth who invented everything on earth but who did he say he put over he said the few don't Wait, worry about the phone baby at? you gotta put the phone down right now please come on mama work with me please mama come on baby see what I mean put the phone 
Ah, there we go. All right. Okay. All this praise is. it. See, one thing about this men, we be like this here. Yeah. Women be. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. Facebook. Yeah, 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 yeah. Men are here. Women, y'all on three different things. Y'all mind be multitasking. But, babe, I need you here with me right now. Okay. All right. We trying to flow right now. This is a beautiful lesson. Come on, baby. One verse, what we at? Verse what? Verse four. Well, read it again. And those who were nothing shall rule over the strong. Yes. Go ahead. And the poor shall have abundance beyond the rich. Wait a minute. The poor going to have what? Abundance beyond the rich. So you are poor right now. But the Lord said that the multitude of the sea going to be given back to Israel. Y'all have no idea what's going to be given to you. If you can only, what is faith? Hopes of things, what? Yet not seen. This is what you need to have. You need to read these books. You get your faith up and realize that you're the poor right now. But the Lord said, I didn't come for the rich of this world, but what? The poor of this world, but rich in what, Sister McKay? Rich in faith. Mm -hmm. That's who we came for. Let's keep going, please. It says, and I'm still on verse four at the bottom. See, that's why I let my wife read, make a read, because not. I know she's multitasking now. It says, and the impious shall exalt themselves above the heroic. Yes. And the wise shall be silent. The, the wise shall be what? Silent. See, sometimes, folks, it ain't good to talk about everything. You open a door that you don't want to open. Sure Did he not enough. say, be careful in front of the king, don't brag or boast, or he'll deliver you up? Did he not say, don't lend to a strong man? Why? Because you can't go get it back if you're trying to. Sometimes it's best to be quiet. Sometimes you'll know certain things, but you know what? Let me just keep it quiet. Yeah. It's not time to speak on that. It's a time to hug and time not to hug. There's a time to talk and time not to talk. There's a time to love and time not to love. There's a time to be quiet. And I'm telling you right now, a lot of people don't know when to be quiet. They'll start speaking out of order. And then what people do is take their words and they'll take it out of order. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I was talking to a brother the other day. And I was telling them the scriptures say, be careful what you say because a bird will do what? Take it away from the windowsill. By the time it gets to one person, it's another thing. Right. By the time it gets to another Hello. person, it's another thing. By the time it gets to another person, and then by the time it come back to you, it ain't none of the conversation you had. Yeah. None that of it. Too. Say that again. That telephone game we used to play. What are you doing? You had the... Um, oh, yeah, so the little ear thing. No, you whisper. Okay. You whisper, have right. a line of people. Yeah. So somebody whispers one thing, and then the everybody has to oh. repeat it. By okay. the time you get to the last person, person, it's totally different. Yes. I never played that game, but I can only imagine. You played it in elementary. Wow. I didn't know that game. Uh -huh. All praises. Where we at, Sister Kaya? We're on 2nd Baruch, chapter 70, verse... Verse 4. Verse 4. Go ahead. It says, I'm at towards the bottom. And the poor shall have abundance beyond the rich, and the impious shall exalt themselves above the heroic. Yes. And the wise shall be silent, and the foolish shall speak. Neither shall the thought of men be then confirmed. Yes. Nor the counsel of the mighty, nor shall the hope of those who hope be confirmed. Yes. And when those things which were predicted have come to pass. Which were what? Were predicted. This is all predicted, folks. Everything you're seeing right now was already predicted. Mm -hmm. The Lord already spoke it. Now you're seeing it come to pass. Keep reading. Then shall confusion. Wait, so then shall what? Confusion. This is that cloudy. Darkness means what? No laws. Man, the laws are done away with. Y'all don't have to follow the law. That's old school. That's that's old test. We don't do old test, but you got tithe, though. Yes. But you got to tithe, though. That's the only one in old test we got to do. The rest is done away with. Now that brings confusion. First, he went to 14.33. The Lord said, not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. But that stuff brings confusion. Go ahead, read. Then shall confusion fall upon all men. Upon some men? All men. Everybody's been under confusion. Yes. Because the YT man and all of these other nations, what have they done? They've sat there and given us nothing but lies. You have not been educated. You've been indoctrinated. There's nothing about what they taught us. It benefits you. Nothing. Zero. It What it does is what they've taught us is to how to be slaves for a long time yeah. so they can keep making a shekel or a goyim off of us. Because if they gave us money, they gave us 40 acres in the mule, we use them for the fuel. Because once we got our wealth, we'll burn them up. Yeah. They know it. They don't want that to happen. That's why they will never give. The book of Obadiah they will never give us anything back. That's like the Pharaoh did with the first captivity. He didn't give us nothing back. You know why? Because once he gave it to us, he know we're industrious people. Yeah. We build nations. Did not Abraham was told that your all nations will be wealthy from your mm -hmm. children? 
They won't give it back to us because they know Black Wall Street. They know all these other cities we build. Once you give us an opportunity, we will surpass you tenfold, fifty, and a hundred. Not only that, we'll build advanced civilizations that you can't even mimic. Yeah. That's why they came through and tore down all our buildings here. We are the Tartarians. We had buildings that were so beautiful, free energy called ether on top of our buildings. They tore it all down. And then they rebuilt this substandard system that you see today and took ether off the periodic table completely took it off the periodic table so you don't know that you can have free energy and then what do they do now they say you got to pay for your water and give us all this confusing math huh? and science science and math that's could because they couldn't understand they could, ours. and so they made it complex mm -hmm. this is deep man go ahead so second right, rook chapter on, seven verse i'm still on verse six go ahead i'm in the middle it says, and some of them shall fall in battle, and some of them shall perish in anguish, and some of them shall be destroyed by their own. By their what? Is that not happening? Let's open it right some now. How many of our people blood touching blood? Look at all our young people hurting each other. huh? These men and these gangs and all of this, not understanding. And I'm going to say this again. The Lord said we touch each other. We're breaking laws. But when another nation do something to us, that's an act of war. Mm -hmm. Our people got it twisted. But you know what? The Lord is untwisting and he's straightening us out right now as we speak. Go ahead and go for some kind. Second Baruch 70, verse 7. Go ahead. It says, then El Elyon will reveal those people whom what? he has whoa, prepared whoa, 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 whoa. before. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. Stop the press. Did not Putin just show the people that was prepared before the earth was even made because we was with him in the heavens to bring here? to do certain things. And then he said, blessed are the ones who make it to the end because you've been tested more than anybody else on this earth. Putin showed who we are. Read that again, please. It says, then El Elyon will reveal those people. Those who? People. We are those people who are being revealed. Go ahead. Whom he has prepared before. Come and on. They shall come and make war with the leaders that shall then be left. Well, this is why they try to take out our first one of the males. They knew that the people who've been prepared are going to be the battle axe. We're going to be the ones to take them out. Even down to shooting these babies up. Come on, man. The baby boys in our nation get a different formula. Yes, man. Real I want y'all to know that. We've been telling people, don't give your baby their medicines. Don't give it to them. And now we keep getting more confirmation. We got another young lady we love so much. And she told us that now her son, who's three years old, her grandbaby, and we told him, don't give him the stuff. Did we not? Yeah. And you know, and she's a sweetheart. But now the baby has got to go to special classes. The baby's slow. That's just one of many that we're seeing. Now we're looking at babies who have not had it. It's real heartbreaking because they're, they're innocent souls. Now we're looking at, like, we don't, not our babies get this stuff. They're like so advanced, so advanced because they don't have the metals and the toxins slowing them down. They don't have these things that they put in them because they've been experimenting on us for what? Millennial times. They've been experimenting. Why do you think the hospitals was made? Yeah. You, you guys ever read Medical Apartheid? I implore you to read it. Go on Audible and look up Medical Apartheid. Look it up. Guess look. what the hospital was made for? Us. We were the experimentations. That's what they call it. They tell you they're what, practicing. What did the doctor you. tell you when Emory? He said, we call it a medical practice, you know. We're practicing on you. Because I was shocked when he broke down chemo to me. Right. And he said, well, we call it a medical practice, we, don't we? I'm like, mm. He said, we give it to him. That gave me the creeps right he, there. He said, we give it to him, hoping that it don't kill, it kills that before it kills them. So... He told me straight up, there's a whole. different level of toxins right. putting in the body, hoping it kills the cancer before it kills the The cancer. Lord says in Genesis 1, to multiply and do what? Fill the earth. What does Satan say? There's too many people we yeah. need to eradicate. Yeah. He's the opposite of the most high. Kill, steal, but, and destroy. But he does not the way of the Lord. Just keep reading, please. Second Baruch chapter 70, verse 7, is it? Um, well, eight, eight, verse, eight. Eight, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that whosoever gets safe out of the war shall die in the earthquake. Yeah. And whosoever gets safe out of the earthquake shall be burned by the fire. So you're going to go through the earthquake, but if the earthquake don't get you, this is with these people of these other nations right now. If the earthquake don't get you, they're going to be burned by what? The fire. If the fire don't get them, keep reading. And whosoever gets safe out of the fire shall be destroyed by famine. What goes, now you see over there in Gaza what's happening. Remember Zechariah 8? 
Zechariah chapter one, one through four. What does it say? Hmm? Zephaniah, excuse me. Chapter they're one. It says they're going to be ga at Gaza, Gaza, and, and Palestine. Gonna it's going to be taken away. This is why you're seeing this. And this is why these people are starving over there. It was already written what? Before time. Keep reading. Verse nine. And it shall come to pass that whosoever of the victors and the vanquished gets safe out of and escapes all these things. If they escape the all days, of these things because he got that cup in their hand now. Even if they escape all this, go ahead. Will be delivered into the hands of my servant, Mashiach. Oh, in the hand of who? Mashiach. You sure going to get him regardless. Because he, he says when he comes back, he's going to cut him with what? The sword of his mouth. Yeah. His garment's going to be white. But when he finished, they're going to be like in a wine press. Blood going to go up to a horse's bridle. Y'all yeah. know how tall a horse is? That's how high the blood going to be. Because of the blood of the saints have been spilled. And our blood of our people have been hollering out to the heavens. And you know what? The Lord has heard it now. He's about, you know, how long? How long should we wait? Just a little while to the name of your brethren have been killed just like you. Yeah. Then he's going to. Tap Michael on the shoulder. All right, time to go. Time to get it on. Go and get them 10,000 saints. I want you going down there. And I want you to wake up all my children, what I call my battle axe, the innumerable army. Ezekiel 34, he tells you this. That's what he calls our people who are dead. He calls them this innumerable army. I want you to wake them up. I want you to make them a battle axe. And I want them to go through the earth to do judgment. Just like I had them do with Moses. Just like I had them do with Joshua. I want them to cleanse this earth. This is who we are. We are children of the light. Only we do dark things that we become darkened. We are light creatures. The thing is, is these nations have taught us so much darkness. But right now, the Lord is not, he's not taking us out. He's pulling us out of it. We're in the ripening of time. He's, he's pulling us out of this darkness right mm -hmm. now. All praise to the Most High. Yes. Go ahead, Sister Micaiah. Verse 10, it says, for all the earth shall devour its inhabitants. All well, praise is what we are here, 71. And the Holy Land shall have mercy on its own, and it shall protect its inhabitants at that time. This is the vision which you have seen, and this is interpretation. For I have come to tell you these things because your prayer has been heard with El Elyon. All praises to the Most High. Verse 72. Hear now also regarding the bright lightning which is to come in the consummation after these black waters. This is the word. After the signs have come, which you were told before, when the nations become turbulent and the time of my Hamashach has come, he shall both summon all nations, and some of them he shall spare, and some of them he shall slay. These things, therefore, shall come upon the nations which are to be spared by him. Every nation, I want y'all to listen to this. I want y'all to listen to this. And I want y'all to get this, all you Gentiles out there who are not Israel, all you people out there listening right now who are not my people, I want y'all to get this, and I want you to meditate on this. It says, verse three, this is four. second verse, second book, chapter 72, verse four. Every nation which knows not Israel and has not trodden down the seed of Jacob shall indeed be what? Spared. That nation will be spared. You didn't know we was Israel. You just did things out of ignorance. You didn't know we were. Now, Putin told everybody. We've been telling everybody for, for the last 10, 12 years. Now, Putin is telling everybody. He let the whole world know we are. So every nation who didn't know who we were, and didn't trod down on us like Russia. They never trod down on us. They never had some slavery. They didn't do taxes on us. They never colonized us. They never done anything. Why? Because they've always had our records of who we are. So they always had a fear to mess with us. So it says any nation who has not trotted down on us. What are we at? Verse four. We're now on verse five. Okay. We Every nation who has not. Four. I know. I'm, I know I'm going over it again. Mm -hmm. Every nation which is not. Not that knows not Israel has not trodden down the seed of Jacob shall indeed be spared. This is because some out of every nation shall be subject to what? Your people. So you always say, well, Esau is going to be destroyed. Well, they're going to be destroyed. Well, I know all of them going to be destroyed. No, 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 no. Verse 5 say, this is what it says. It says, because some out of every nation shall be subject unto your people. Those who took you into captivity must go into captivity. Those who kill with a sword will die by the sword. This is simply what this is meaning. Zechariah 8, 23, 10 men from every nation going to do what? Take hold of the skirt of a Jew and say, we're going to go with you because mm -hmm. we know that the Most High is with you. This is what this is saying. Six, verse six. But all those who have ruled over you and have known you shall be given up to the sword. Did y'all get that? Every nation who knew who we were and still oppressed us, 
Every nation, you understand, who didn't give us back money, gold and silver, because remember, we own all the lands. It was numerous sands of the sea. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, we own the lands. So every nation who trotted down on us knew exactly who we are, but called us a coon, a, a Negro, black, colored, knowing we Israel. Then they named us African-American. He says, all these nations who've done that to you, I'm going to kill them with the sword. That's why his the that's why the blood is gonna be up to a horse's bridle. Because so many of them know who we are. But you know what? They're jealous of us. They're jealous of us. They're jealous because we're the salt of the earth. And if we don't salt it, there's no flavor. Like I said, we get dapped, they get dapped. Our boys drop their pants, now they dropping their pants. We we wear a shirt, a hat sideways, you know. They look at their hat sideways. We jump, we, we get we they jump up, bump chest, now they bumping chest. Now I see these Korean and Asian nations doing all these so-called dances like we do. Yeah. You know, I ain't gonna lie, they be in sync, boy. They be in sync. I ain't gonna lie. I, be one of, I know when they did, they did some DNA champ, they sure put some up in them. Well, them Asians be in sync, boy. Yeah. Some of them be moving better than us. Yeah. But all nations imitate us. Do y'all not see this? Do y'all not see how all these nations imitate us? Because we are truly the salt of the earth. We brought forth all music, science, math, literature, when you're dealing with the ice cream machine, when you're dealing with the coffee maker, when you're dealing with um, what is, what, what, you know, I think about that one guy. What is his name? The real McCoy. The real no. McCoy. When you deal with the trains coming together, one thing they had to do, they had to stop so many miles and they had to lubricate them. Well, the, Mr. McCoy, what he did was create a self-lubricating machine. And so now the trains could go perpetually and self-lubricate. So that's why when they would make parts, they say, if it ain't the real McCoy, I don't want it. That's where that term came from. Now, they only invented what? The patent office, right? Right. That's it. Folks, if it wasn't for us, you would not have the telephone. You would not have internet. internet. You would not have, you know, television. You would have none of the modern things you got. to. GPS was started by a black woman. You wouldn't even know how to go around the corner without a map again. I'm just giving it to you. Where we at, Sister McKay? Okay, we already read this. Go ahead, your turn. 73. Go ahead. 73 verse 1. And it shall come to pass when he has brought low everything that is in the world. He's brought low what? Everything. everything. He said even the mountain's going to melt. Yes. Everything's going to be brought low. All the islands are going to be done away with. And he's going to bring every mountain low on this earth. Everything's going to be humbled. Yes. That's what he's going to do. Go ahead. And has sat down in peace for the age on the throne of his kingdom. Come on now. That joy shall then be revealed. What's going to be revealed then? Joy. That's when we will have joy. It's going to be revealed. You see, folks, when you start reading the four and the ladder, it casts out all that fear. Now y'all getting understanding. You get knowledge. Oh, and through this knowledge, you're getting your faith up. And through yes. this faith, now you're getting hope. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for, but yet not seen. Now you're believing in the things you can't see. Why? Because you're spiritual creatures and your spirit is testifying that this is so true. Yes. Because it's engrafted in us. It's part of our DNA. Keep reading, please, Sister Micaiah. It says, and rest shall appear. What shall appear? Rest. Because y'all resting right now? Hmm. I'm tired. I'm dog tired. I'm tired of getting up to go and do arm security. I'm tired of getting up to go do maintenance calls. I'm tired of getting up to go cook. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of I'm tired of watching babies. My, my grandbabies all the time. Shoot, I I want some babysitters, man. I'm I'm ready to hire my handmaids and servants. Shoot, man, I got grand. I got thirty two grandchildren. Thirty two, man. I got thirty two, man. Thirty two grandchildren, man. You know, I'm tired. I'm dog tired. So saying that, I'm tired. I want help too. I want to help. I got to help, mate. But I need more help. I want my handmaids and servants. <laughs> Wait, thank you. I want handmaids and servants. Come on. We tired. Go ahead. Verse two. And then healing shall descend and do. What's going to descend and do? Healing. So the dew is going to come down. Remember the earth before the floods. There was never rain. Only dew came on the earth. But now he's going to put it. Remember he said, I'm going to give you former rains, but greater than, but greater than before. This is that dew he's talking about. Because we used to have water. The whole earth would do. But this dude, this kind of going to do what? Heal. It's going to heal. Keep reading, please. And disease shall withdraw. What's going to withdraw? Disease. All you people with sickness, disease, and all that, this is time for them to come. There'll be no more disease, no more sickness. Yeah. When that do a mist get on you and you feel that moisture on your skin and you walk outside and you do this, you're going to be brand new again. That's yeah. what's coming on this earth. Keep reading, please. 
I'm still in verse two. We're in second Baruch chapter 73, verse two. Go ahead. And anxiety and anguish and what? lamentation. So anxiety, anguish inside of you always, like my son said, I wake up sometimes just angry. Yeah. I just wake up like that, you know? So he says anguish, anxiety, and what's the other one? Lamentation. Lamentation is crying all the time for your loved ones and people dying and you're going through emotional problems because your spouse ain't right and you think you got somebody good and they're cheating on you. Or you think you got your children, you love them, you don't burp them, you don't fed them, you don't did all the night, they're cussing you out, calling you names and forgetting that you're the one who put them on this earth. Mm -hmm. That's some lamentations if I ain't never seen none. Yeah. He said, I'm going to do away with all of this, not by force, not by might, but I'm going to show y'all I'm going to do this with the spirit. Let's keep going, please. It says, pass from amongst men. It's going to do what? Pass from amongst men. Because when Yeshua comes back, after he wakes Satan for a thousand years, he's going to be released after a thousand years. He's going to be released for a little while. Once he does and Yeshua destroys him, he's going to be throwing a lake of fire. Death's going to be throwing a lake of fire. Some zizel, zizel. And the 200 angels that came down with them are going to be throwing a lake of fire. And then all the sinners are going to be riding that lake of sulfur. They go, you know how you smell a match? <laughs> And it smells like sulfur, where well, they're going to be riding that perpetually. Death is going to be done away with. One man brought death, but you got one that's going to come and bring it away, take it away. This is going to be a beautiful time. Go ahead. It says, and gladness proceed through the whole earth, and no one shall again die untimely, nor shall any adversity suddenly befall. Yes. And judgments and revilings and contentions and revenges and blood and passions and envy and hatred and whatsoever things are like these shall go into condemnation when they are removed. There will be none of this no more. Read the words one more time, please. I want everybody to understand this, what's here. Read the words again. This is 73 verse 4, second Baruch 73 verse 4. What's going to be done away with? And judgment and reviling. Arguing and going back and forth. And contention. It's always going back and forth with each other. Go ahead. And revenges. It's always say, I'm going to get judgment. I'm going to go get justice on that. I'm going to take care of them. They ain't getting away with this. Go ahead. And blood I'm, and passion. Come on. And envy and hatred and whatsoever things are like these. Come on, They'll man. go into condemnation Folks, when they are removed. Can you imagine a world like that? I remember the Lord showed me that. He showed me one hour when he seen these lights were shooting behind me. I asked him to show me. He took me to heavens. And I saw seven dragons line up in the heavens. Seven. And when I say these lights was hitting this one, it kept popping up, popping up because it was envy, contention, judgment, all this blood being shed. So the dragon just kept coming back. It just kept coming back. Mm -hmm. But I called on Yeshua. I called on the one who says y'all saves, and all of a sudden lights was hitting that dragon, boop, 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 and then all seven disappeared. And one day, within one hour, the Lord brought peace on this earth, and I saw peace in the heavens. All this is going to be done away with. The Lord showed it to me in a vision one day, and I tried to fight it three times, just like Jonah. Three times I did not want to go in that dream. I, I'm scared of heights. He took me into space. I was freaking out, and I went to sleep, and I woke up. Ten minutes later, he took me there again, twice. And I didn't understand until the Lord said, do you not remember the sign of Jonah? I remember he said it to me. And I remember at the end of that moment, I had asked the Lord to show me the future. Hmm. And in that moment, I said, okay, it's time for me to go to sleep. And I kid you not, for the third time, he took me right back into space, which was I call the heavens. It's not space, it's heavens. Because I could see the earth at a distance. It was a big spot. We talked about this the other day. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord got rid of that, he showed me there was peace in one day within one hour. He's going to do all this in a short period of time, folks. We just didn't don't know it. See, we look at this stuff in carnal ways, but he's going to do this in a spiritual way. Yeah. Where we at, Sister Makaya? Uh, 2nd Baruch 73, verse 5. Go ahead. It says, for it is these very things which have filled this world with evil. Yes. And on account of these, the life of man has been greatly troubled. Greatly troubled. Go ahead. And wild beasts shall come from the forest and minister unto men. Woo, woo, woo. Wild beasts going to do what? They're going to be serving us, ministering to huh? us. Huh? The wild beast is going to be doing whatever you say. Remember, I want y'all to get this. Before Adam and Eve transgressed, all the animals spoke to us. The only reason language was taken because they would see when you read the book of Adam, about this beautiful, beautiful creature. And the Lord turned that creature into a snake and all of his kind. And then he said, because he deceived with the voice, and that was the second time he deceived her twice. Because the second time he deceived her, she was in a river. That's when you read the book of Adam and Eve. 
and he deceived her twice. And when he came to Adam, because Adam told her, don't move. Stay over that woman. Whatever you hear, don't move. Eve, Eve. Listen to me, Eve. I know you're hard-headed. I know you don't like to listen, but I'm your man. If Satan come to you, I don't care what happened, don't leave the water. Okay, okay, baby. I ain't going nowhere. I, I got it. Don't you gotta tell me twice. I got it. <laughs> All right, okay. But Satan came over again and said a few choice words mm -hmm. to her. The next thing you know, she walking over to Adam. I'm like, well, well you, didn't I tell you to stay in the river? Well, the angel came to me. Oh Lord, this woman don't got deceived again. Man, this woman keep getting deceived. Sound familiar, y'all? Sound familiar? Who the first to take the Kool-Aid amongst our people? Our uh, women. I hate to say it. It's the mm -hmm. truth. You'll see the women, our women marching with these uh, Black Lives Matter. You'll see our women get Palestine, Palestine, Palestine. Hey, we need to. Uh. They the first to take the Kool-Aid. Not understand there's judgment on this earth. And so when Eve, when what, what, what I'm saying is, is when, 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 when Satan deceived like that, guess what the Lord did? Since he did it twice, the Lord said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and just take all the voice from you, all the animals. And so no animal ever deceive a man again. They're not going to be able to talk. That's why when you talk to your animals, you see them looking at you. They be understanding everything you're saying. They just can't get it out. And sometimes some of these cats and stuff, I don't heard them saying some words like they're trying to get their voice back again because they'll be answering you. And answer, animals answer you in different ways, their body language, the way they move or the way they look at you. You know exactly what they, they want. They understand us very well. They understand us very well. They just can't speak because it was taken. It was taken on the second time that Eve was deceived by the creature. Mm -hmm. That's why it was taken. What are we at, Sister Kaya? All right, I'm on verse uh, verse five. Go ahead. Second Baruch 73, verse five. For it is these very things which have filled this world with evils, and on account of these, the life of man has been greatly troubled. Yes. And wild beasts shall come from the forest and minister unto men, yes. and ass and dragons shall come forth from their hole to submit themselves to a little child. To a little what? Child. This, this is when he says that a child will sit by a cockatoo, put their hand in it, and nothing will bite them. These mm -hmm. animals will even submit themselves to a little child. This is why I say a, a, a lion going to be eating what? Straw. This is deep. Animals will not have the contention. You'll never be afraid of another animal. Now, when you walk with the Lord, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't be afraid of animals. Mm -hmm. I don't be afraid of, you know, I've been allergic to bees. I can walk through a swarm of them. They don't bite me. Just walk through them. Why? Because when you start really understanding and having the spirit of the most high, you understand and they don't want to bother you and they don't want you bothering them. Yeah. Once you become afraid, there's an energy that your body puts off. It's an invisible, it's an invisible frequency that you emit. And they've attracted to it because you know what it's called? It's called fear. Animals bother you just like man bothers you when you're afraid. When you don't have fear, when you walk with confidence, when you walk with light, the animals and the insects don't even bother you. It's pretty deep. There I've was actually this. a little bee in the truck today when I got in the truck. And it oh, Lord, did you want, did you, focused the, on trying to get out the window. You know, they know you're going to run out the car because they know you're trying to run I out the window. Afraid. Though. All I just, praises, because I know. I let it out. Our auntie, a bee came to the car. I think she went on went through the windshield. I remember before she went through the windshield. When a wasp uh, had freak out, boy. In my car, I hit the brake. I don't. Um, I didn't know if somebody was behind me or what. Nothing, it's man. In the car, and I just slammed on my brake. And see, this is the the good example of fear. Yeah, it's not just fear of what we would call man, but it's also fear of the Lord's other creatures. When you become knowledgeable and have understanding, yes. it'll cast out fear at so many levels yes. where you're not subject to the priors or the bondage of this world. Yes. It's a beautiful yes. thing, you know. Uh, we are on 70, second, 73 and 6, I believe. Verse 7. Verse 7, go ahead. And women shall no longer then have pain when they bear. So all you women who wonder, man, shoot, I'm, I don't want no baby. I, I had that baby, man, I was sick for some seven months of the nine. And man, when I had that baby, man, that was the worst feeling. I know because when my baby was born, my oldest baby, I went through the pain. She didn't go through oh, nothing. Crazy. She didn't go through nothing. I was Ooh. walking bow-legged in that hospital. You would have thought, man, a wall of metal would come between my legs. So I was so I was so <laughs> sick. It was the sickest thing that I ever felt in my life. And yeah. I had to get my own bed, and they were taking pictures of me. And I remember that 
it just had hit me, and they said, we've never seen, we've only seen this happen three or four times, but never this bad. That is your spiritual soulmate. That's what the nurse said. That's your she soulmate. Been there 30 years. She said, I've been a 30 some years and I've never seen it like this. She said, That is your soulmate he right there. In the bed too, Man, I was so sick, boy. <laughs> that was sick as I've ever been in my life. I don't, when you have a baby, you don't wish that on your enemy because it's like the pressure is so horrific. It's like a watermelon trying to force its way through a little hole. Then the sickness that was so sick, I wanted to throw up, but I couldn't throw up because I was too sick. My back was hurting. This was hurting. But then when I was walking through the hospital, it's like when the contractions came with her, my legs got wider and wider, so I started walking bow-legged like Fred Sanford, man. <laughs> and they were laughing at me, but it was nothing funny. And I didn't want nobody to even know about this I for a long time. I didn't want no whatever they did. I didn't want nobody. They went and got a, machine, a camera at the vending machine. They were taking pictures. They were taking pictures with the camera, man. That's I was hilarious. embarrassed, though. Mm -hmm. And I told her mom, I made her mom a promise not to talk about it for a long time. But she didn't listen to me. She was telling everybody. So, But what I'm telling you is that <laughs> It says here that a woman should no longer bear pain. Yes. Neither her husband. You understand? <laughs> neither her husband. And so keep reading. It says a Nor woman. Nor shall they suffer. So when you have a baby. Torment. This is why the Lord says that there's a one man will have what? A thousand babies. You'll be having babies and you'll have them in no time, but you won't feel the pain. You won't have the blood. You won't have none of that. You'll yes. be a spiritual creature. Yes. Your body going to go right back like it was. Remember, our women's body did not come out of form until they started being like the other nations. You understand that? When you start being like the other nations and want to be like, remember Sarah had all, she was had babies, but she was flying at 08, 90 something. King wanted her. Because why? King wanted her. She had a built-in girth. But the Lord said, because that was Isaiah, what? He talks about it? Chapter three. Isaiah yeah. chapter three talks about it. You guys write it down. Because the haughty eyes looking at other nations, the Lord then gave our women birthing pains. That's when they also, after the baby, they get a sash no, cloth. they got birth and pain. Well, in Eve. the beginning, well, in the beginning with Eve, right. But what I'm saying is, when they started, what well, I'm just talking about how their shape was. He said in right. Isaiah 3, he said, instead of keeping their shape, he gave them a sash cloth. But now, you won't have to worry about that, ladies. Yeah. We're reading right here. And write this down. It's your precept. It's a preceptor right now. Women birth and pain. Will we have birth and pains anymore? Will we still go through that? Or will it just be like we had a baby and keep it moving? You're going to have a baby and go get some coffee right after that. You ain't even going to know you had a baby because your body is going to be immortal. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to, what it's going to do, it's going to repair itself instantly. You're going to be just like you never had a baby. No stretch marks, no nothing. You won't even tell nothing came out the womb. You know? Because when I seen my wife having that baby, boy, I was like, Lord, I couldn't <laughs> believe it, man. I'm like, that baby coming out of it, boy. Oh, the dog put some extra stitches in now. <laughs> man, she was she was like, what? Why you out of You crazy, man. It was it was funny though. I was like, man, I seen that baby. You just can't see, you know, you thinking that's give you so much respect for a woman. When you see how she has to give life. And ladies, I want y'all to get this. Y'all breed saints. You're the one who breed kings and priests. This is why the Lord holds you at a highest, high, higher, higher level. He holds you to higher self-esteem because you breed us. Why do you think these YT men always be beating on our women and you see them on these videos doing that? They hate you because you breed us. They don't even know why. It's inside of them. Not just them. I don't see some Arabs. I don't see some other Asian men treat our women like horrible and hit on them. All these nations do. All these nations are confederate. But this is why the Lord is pulling us out of that right now. Now, another thing he's doing too, he's showing us here that when we are made new again, that our mindset and our body is going to be totally different. Mm -hmm. That's why he doesn't want you to have fear. If you go and leave right now, I don't care what it is, he's going to bring you right back and put you back together again. So what you scared of? Why are you scared? You know why you're scared? You're scared because you're in sin or don't follow these laws. You're worried what may happen. Will you fall backwards or will you fall forward straight into hell? But also, like, the, like we read before. Right understanding isn't there right. for a lot of people yes. that are afraid. They that's what it, that's all it is. Understanding. People They're fear ignorant. what they don't understand. They're ignorant. My wife hit it right on the head. People are just ignorant. But once you come into the truth, the truth does what? It makes you free. It sets you that's free. Literal. It takes those bands off your arm. You're no longer in bondage. This is beautiful. You know, I understand now when I'm out and the bumblebee come flying up, they just mm -hmm. checking me out. That's like, it. I'm looking, watching them. That's all they do, especially a bumblebee. They'll come up. Look, they just nosy. And then 
going about their business. No, a wasp is different. See, a, a bee, what you got to say about a bee? And bee, what does bees do? Without bees, we'll have no plants. We'll have no fertility. They pollinate. They pollinate everything. The bees help sustain life. A wasp can sting you over and over again, but a bee, once it stings you, their life is gone. Their stinger comes out in you and they die. Mm -hmm. But a wasp can hit you over and over again. So a bee, you got to understand, to me, is a semblance of life. And so you shouldn't be afraid of these things that the Lord gave on this earth. You know, and, and I know so many women don't even want to go in the woods because they scared of every little fly, every little thing. But y'all going to be in the wilderness. You better start going to the park or somewhere and get you some bugs because you show up and be seeing them. You're going to be seeing them. Where are we All at, right, Sister McKay? We're on uh, 2 Baruch 73, verse 7. And women shall no longer then have pain when they bear, nor shall they suffer torment when they yield the fruit of the womb. No more baby pain. And it shall come to pass in those days that the reapers shall not grow weary. No. Nor those that build be toil, be toil, toil worn. worn. Yes. For the work shall of themselves speedily advance together with those who do them in much tranquility. Do them in much what? Tranquility. What does that mean? That's Peace. In peace. They're going to do it with peace. Go ahead. For that time is the consummation of that which is corruptible. Yes. And the beginning of that which is not corruptible. Esau Ooh, is the end of the world and Jacob is what? The beginning. We are the beginning. The end of the corruptible world is coming. Yes. When you take your hands and that hand becomes white, it's a sign of what? Uncleanness. Yes. So there's been an unclean, corruption, corruption nation. You understand? Running everything. But now the Lord is going to turn it back to who? The incorruptible. The incorruptible, the children of the light. Yes. We are light creatures, but we just have dark skin. The darkness is on the outside, but it sure ain't on the inside. Mm. Let's keep going. Verse 3. Therefore, those things which were predicted shall belong to it. Come on. Therefore, it is far away from evils mm. and near to those things which die not. Yes. This is the bright lightning which came after the last dark water. Oh, Hallelujah. praise to the Most High. Yes, indeed. And I answered and said, who can understand, O Yahuwah, your goodness? For it is incomprehensible. Or who can search into your compassions, which are infinite? Or who can comprehend your intelligence? Or who is it able to recount the thoughts of your mind? Or who of those who are born can hope to come to those things unless he is one of whom you are merciful and gracious to? Because if assuredly you did not have compassion on men, those who are under your right hand, they could not come to those things. But those who are in the, who are in the number name can be called. Those who are what? In the numbers, their name can be called. So a lot of people right now, us. this is a called out assembly. That's why he says this is a called out assembly. And if he ain't calling you, how can you assemble? I want y'all to get that. Remember this too. He said many are called, but few are what? Chosen. A lot of y'all are being called right now. But depending on what you do, when you leave us, remember the Lord says, you know, a man who has a double mind, he likes it to a person who looks in the mirror, but as soon as he pulls away, he forgets straight he straight away forgets who he is, is, what kind yeah. of man he is. That's what happens when you read this word, you hear this word. But as soon as somebody do something to you, you cursing them out, you know, they're still in your crown. As soon as somebody um dies, you start crying and you you don't, you know, you don't even go to the Lord no more. As soon as something happens with your children, you stop dealing with them. As soon as something happens to your spouse and you go to relationship problems, you lose your faith with the Lord. Yeah. This is when you're sown on rocks. Your, your root your root does not take ground. And Satan comes does what? He steals it away. you got to be sown on fertile ground. You can't be unless you read this word. That seed has to be tilled in the ground with the spiritual plow. Last lesson we went over it. We showed how Abraham had a plow that he made where the seed actually, instead of falling on top of the ground, where the birds or Satan, because the birds, the crows came with who? Satan. Yeah. Would steal it away. But he had a spiritual plow with a hook on it. You have to have a hook in that seed and it takes it in that ground. What does it do? The ground covers over and it can take root. Too many people hear the word. They know the word, but ain't no truth in them. That seed is never taken root. So how can you ever bear good fruit? And yes, a lot indeed. of people don't understand this. And, you know, that's that's what's important. Mm -hmm. Going back to what you said about a man looking in the mirror. Yeah. It's so important that we take 
Yes. Truthful, honest looks at and every ourselves, aspect what we doing. of ourselves yes. from the standpoint of, of these scriptures. scriptures. Not what we feel in our heart. Right. Curses the man or woman who follows their heart. Exactly. Well, I feel like this. Well, I feel like, well, wait a minute. The standard is here. It's not what you feel here. Exactly. It's what's written in that Torah. Yes. What's written in the laws. Yes. What's written in your heart because he implanted it in you. You know when you're doing wrong, you feel it. That's you get right. you call it conviction. But the Lord calls it a moral compass yes. that he put in you a long time ago. You know you should be walking left, but you keep walking right. You know you don't supposed to be going backwards, you understand, but you keep walking backwards. You know that every time you put your foot on that path, you come to the same conclusion. But yet you do it every time, but you keep expecting a different result. Yeah. What world are you in? Even trying to justify some of the sins. You the unjustifiable. Doing. You can't make righteous what's unrighteous. Come on. You can't do it. You can't make holy unholy. Yeah. You just can't do it. How many people come to us and want us to co-sign on their foolishness? <laughs> you got the wrong person. You come to me. Wrong folks. You come to me. I'm going to tell you exactly what the Lord said. I'm not going to tell you what I think. I'm going to tell you what's written. So I'm not judging you. The word has already judged you. So don't ignore the conviction. Come on. What you need to do is face up to it, actually confess it. And remember, nobody's and perfect. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's yeah. made mistakes. We're not the judge. Listen, we can't tell you what the Lord's going to forgive, what he's not. Now, he's already written certain ones liars, effeminates, adulterers, fornicators. You will not get in the Sinning kingdom. Against the Holy Sin Spirit, against the Holy Spirit. So he's Lord. wrote certain scriptures he told you straight away. You ain't getting in the kingdom. But the Lord says he's going to forgive the multitude of Israel's sin because he know we did a lot of this out of what? Ignorance. Ignorant. Just like Saul who became Paul. And look at Manasseh. He Come was on. the most the worst. wicked and softened the most high's face. He put his son on the altar. His firstborn. This is how wicked he became and burned him up to Baal. His prayers, the Lord still heard. Why? Because all souls that are taken, he's going to bring them back. He restore them back. He said, I didn't come for the dead. I came for what? He delights in mercy. I came for the living. I delight in mercy. Where are we at? Sister Verse God? three. We're in chapter, second Se book, chapter 75. 74. 74. Verse three. You sure? No, we're on 75. Sweetheart. Oh, 75. We're okay. 75. Yeah. There you go. Well, who can comprehend intelligence? Verse three. Go ahead. Four. Go ahead. It says, or who is able to recount the thoughts of your mind? Or who of those who are born can hope to come to those things unless he is one to whom you are merciful and gracious? Because if assuredly you did not have compassion on man, those who are under your right hand, they could not come to those things. But those who are in the numbers name can be called. Yes, they're written in the book of life. But if indeed we who exist know wherefore we have come, and submit ourselves to him who brought us out of Mitzrayim. Who do we need to submit ourselves to? To the Most High. The one who brought us out with a long stretched out arm. Keep going. We shall come again and remember those things which have passed. Come on. So everybody who say Old Testament, they don't deal with. If you don't deal with Old Testament, how can you remember those things that have passed? That's right. You got to come in a whole volume of the book. Yes. The Old Testament is the bones. The New Testament is the meat, the flesh. Without one, you cannot have the body. Yeah. That's why Yeshua said, I came in the whole volume of this book. If you don't know the past, how can you ever know where you're going in the future? Yeah. Let's keep reading, please. And shall rejoice regarding that which has been. Yes. But if now we know not wherefore we have come and recognize not the principate of him who come brought on. us up out of this right Come on. We shall come again and seek after those things which have been now. Come on. And be grieved with pain because be of those things which have befallen. Because you're dealing with the world. Mm -hmm. But you're not thinking about the spiritual things when the Lord led us by fire, by day, by night, and by daytime, a pill of smoke. So what I'm saying is the Lord saying is when I did all these miracles, when I took you out of Egypt with a long stretched arm, when I led you and I let you fight giants, when I led, led you and I fed you manna from heaven, when I led you and your feet didn't go bare, when I led you and your teeth didn't go white, I let you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by the words of the living God. And yet you still deny me from the empty, empty and from the full, full. If you ain't put nothing in, you ain't finna get nothing out. Keep reading, please, Mr. Micaiah. All right, 76 verse 1. And he answered and said unto me, and okay, as much as the yeah. revelation of this vision has been interpreted to you as you besought, 
Hear the word of El Elyon that you may know what is to befall you after these things. Yes. For you shall surely depart from this earth. Nevertheless, not unto death, no. but you shall be preserved unto the consummation of the time. He said, you're going to depart, but you're not going to have death. You're going to be preserved. Go ahead. Go up, therefore, to the top of that mountain, and there shall pass before you all the regions of that land mm. and the figure of the inhabited world and the tops of the mountains and the depths of the valleys and the depths of the seas and the number of the rivers that you may see what you are leaving and whither you are going. Mm. Now this shall befall after 40 days. Go now, therefore, during these days and instruct the people so far as you are able that they may learn so as not to die Come at on. the last time. Now, that's symbolic. He says, now, therefore, this shall fall, is this shall befall you after how many days? 40, 40 days is when this is going to happen. How many days did the water hit the earth before the ark lifted up? 40 days. 40 days. And then the ark was lifted. And it ended up raining for, what, 10 months or so. Water covered the whole earth. Keep reading, please. It's symbolic here. It says, but may learn in order that they may live at the last time. So that's the same thing that's symbolic of that ark in those 40 days. You understand? He said after 40 days, it's going to happen. Because after 40 days, those who ran from the deluge, they were saved by the ark. So in the last days, those who learn the word, just like those who made it on the ark, they will not. What's this, Micaiah? It says they will that not. they may live at the last time. You will not die. Yes. You will live when you follow this word, when you follow the Torah, the light of the Torah, because it gives you light. You will live in these last times. We're going to stop right there. All praise All right, to the most high. Make a note. We stopped at 76. I want you guys to understand, gals and ladies and children and everyone here to see. And you nation, our Israel and all these other nations. These words are living words, this book. This book is speaking to us right now. It's speaking to us so heavy, it vexes your soul. And so it's a beautiful thing, and I love the Most High for this. You guys have learned in this lesson, you know, women will not have any more pain. You understand? We've learned in this lesson, you know, even the glory, how the Lord is going to make us. We've learned so many things in this lesson just now, even about how the body is going to regenerate it and how we're going to look mm -hmm. in those days. Everything is for a reason. It's so we don't have fear. Love cast out what? Fear. The Lord loves us so much that he gave it to the prophets a long time ago. So as children, you remember he says in Matthew 24, 33, he says, er, he said there'll be earthquakes, famine, pestilence. All these things must come to pass, but be not what? Be afraid. Not, don't be afraid. The Lord did not give us the spirit of fear. We are the people that went through many nations with no fear. Why? Because if we didn't make it, if we gave up the mm -hmm. ghost, we knew something. When we open our eyes, we're going to be with the Messiah. We're going to be with the living God of Israel. So we don't have fear. The Lord told us a long time ago, we're his children, we're his firstborn. And love cast out all fear. And now that I know my father loves me, and I know his name is hallowed, and I know that we are his elect, I know that we'll be his battle axe. I have no fear of nothing, no man, no demons, no spirits, no nothing. I don't have no fear. That's why I'm outside and I, and I got these weapons on me and I got, everybody said, man, brother, you like, you finna go to battle. I am. If, if the evil come up, he, they threw. My bullet's gonna fly faster than theirs and it's gonna fly straight as an arrow. I don't fear, man. I don't fear nothing. I pray, I ask the Lord to protect me and I go out with that shield. You see, the Holy Spirit is my shield. Those weapons I have, that's the new bow. Remember, Jacob was children was taught to use what? The bow, to be accurate. But you know, he's going to do something with us. He's going to give us a spiritual bow this time. Mm -hmm. He's going to make us the battle axe. He said, our feet going to be like Heinz. You know what Heinz is? Heinz is a deer. That's how fast we'll be. Then he said that arrows will bounce off and no weapon forged will do what? Prosper. Won't prosper against us. So we're going to have the same spirit that we had with Moses. We're going to have the same spirit that we had with Joshua. We're going to lose people unless we got iniquity. And that's why all the rebels are going to be weeded out amongst us. Yes. If you're not right, if you're unholy, you're going to be seeing them leave the earth. Remember, the Lord said that the righteous are going to see all the unrighteous leave the earth. You're going to see it. Certainly the ripening of time. Well, it's, we in terror. We in terror. Very, very all right, let me go ahead and turn you. these comments back on. All praises <laughs> to the Most High. Jimmy the Cricket. Let me see here a little bit here. I gotta do this because I gotta stand up. All right, Settings. Said the time of the age has ripened. Yes, it has. Oh, Settings. 
Uh, let's see here. Seven. I got a good question right here. Everybody need to hear it. Oh, praises to the most high. All praises. All praises. You got a question? Hold on. Go ahead and talk. Ask the question. Give me a second here. Okay. So on oh, YouTube praises. here, I have Radarius Drake asks, after knowing and still sin, can one be forgiven if confess and repent? So again, we had referenced earlier the scripture at Hebrews 10, 26, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. I'm going to read it because this is not my words. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, we can't decide. Uh, we can't tell you how the Most High is going to decide, or Yahushua, rather, is going to decide a person's fate. But we just know what's written. And so... Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. It says, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. So that's how it's written. And this is why it's so important that we don't make light of sin and just assume all yeah. will be forgiven because yeah. once you know better, this is the same yeah. trap that Adam and Eve fell into. Yes, if you sir. read the book of Adam and Eve, the most I said, hey, I warned you. And I warned you because uh -huh. I knew Satan was going to come and try to tempt y'all. That's right. So I warned you. If I had not warned you, mm -hmm. then it would be on me. That's but right. since I warned you, it's on you. And the same with the fallen angels. Yeah. They all knew better. Yeah. Came together, got a pack, put a, a, a made an oath together to commit this sin, to forsake their position and make families with these women on earth, thinking the most high would just forgive them. And so that's the thing. Yeah. What happened? They were judged. Yeah. Let's read a couple of scriptures on sin. Let's go to Ezekiel 33 and 12, please. Ezekiel 33, 33 and 12. Ezekiel 33, 12, please. Now elaborate as you read. Take your time. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 12. All praise to the most high. Let's go to read. All right, if I can find it. Okay, no problem. Let me help you. Okay, Ezekiel is right, right there. You're in the right area. I know. Hold on. I'm close. It's okay. Take your time. There's no rush. That's one of them tabs I covered up. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> that's right. You did. I remember. That's why I tell you guys when you guys put your. Okay, you got it. Okay, uh -huh. when you guys put your your tabs in, make sure you put them in order because if you put them one out of place with all these books, man, you'll lose yourself. You know, it's best to order them with the tabs, honestly. Oh, it is okay. it costs a little more, but it's worth it. Yeah. If you can. Let's do this, sweetheart. All right. Ezekiel 33, right. verse 12. Okay, hold on. Turned it up. I apologize. I was trying to give you a stand to help you out a little okay. bit. That way you gotta hold it. I'm trying to be uh help you out, baby. What? You put it on upside down. No, there you go, sweetheart. Okay, let right. you do that. No problem. I mess Thank up. You. Let you handle that, sis. All right. Ezekiel 33, verse 12. It says, Therefore, son of Adam, say unto the children of your people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. So you can be righteous all day long. That's why the scriptures say, if a man is good at the end of his life, none of the bad will be remembered. But if a man is bad at the end of his life, none of the good will be remembered. Go ahead and read. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turns from his wickedness. So if you repent and stop sinning, you're not going to perish because you repented. You asked the Lord to forgive you. You went in the closet. You prayed in secret and asked him to forgive you. So since you did in secret, he rewards you openly. Go ahead and read. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinned. So if he's coming back like a thief in the night. And you're still tomorrow. I'm being refined. I'm trying to get it right. I'm gonna get it right. See, that's up to you. Every man is his own Adam. You, yeah. you, you can sit there and, and and say, okay, I'm being refined. Forgive me, Abba. And I'm not gonna go back. But you go back to it. He comes like a thief in the night. You finna be judged in that moment. Well, think about this. 
The very word repent means to turn away from, to have regret. So why would you be going back to that anyway? Let's read you know? um Second Baruch 14. Second Baruch 14. Uh-huh. Second Baruch chapter 54. Uh -huh. Second Baruch chapter mm -hmm. 54, 14 through 19. 54. Write it down, folks. These are precepts. Write them down on sin. Second Baruch. Chapter 54, 14 through 19. It says, oh, go you go ahead, sweetheart. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and expound as you read. Go ahead. It's fine. And justly do they perish who have not loved your Torah. So the ones who perish are the ones who don't love the Torah. Y'all been told the laws are done away with. Y'all have no clue. Go ahead and read. And the torment of judgment shall await those who have not submitted themselves to your power. What is the power that he's talking about? The power of living righteously. Living righteously. There you go. Keep reading. For though Adam first sinned and brought untimely death upon all, yet of those who were born from him, each one of them has prepared for his own soul come on. torment to come. Come on. And again, each one of them has chosen for himself glories to come. Yes. For assuredly, he who believes will receive reward. Who will, who will receive the reward? He who believes. You got to have faith in order to receive this reward to get in the kingdom. Go ahead. But now, as for you, ye wicked that now are, turn ye to destruction because ye shall speedily be visited. And yes. that formerly ye rejected the understanding of LL. They rejected what? The understanding of the The ones who are not going to make it are the ones who reject the understanding that the Lord has given us right now as we speak. Go ahead and read. For his works have not taught you, nor has the skill of his creation, which is at all times persuaded you. So you see the sea, you see the ocean, you see the birds, you see the breath of life that's in you, see your hands, you look in the mirror, you got eyes to perceive the world. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you got ears where you can hear things that you see. Yes. You got smell that you can distinguish between this tree and that tree. You have the gift that the Lord has, and he shows his works with the moon, the sun. He shows you his works. You understand with the trees that give you shade, even with the seasons, how they come and go in order. But yet you still have not, have not respected the one who created you. Keep yeah. reading, please. It says, Adam is therefore not the cause, save only his own soul. Adam is not the what? The cause. Stop blaming Adam. Adam is in charge of his what? Own soul. Go ahead and read. But each of us has been the atom of his own soul. You the atom of your own soul. So stop blaming Adam. You get a choice so he can see the fruit that comes from you. And this is why it's important to, that we be born again. <clears throat> yes. You know, that's why Yahushua said, unless you're born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom. Because it requires you to become a new person to where you don't have those same sinful desires and things anymore. And that's why he left the Holy Spirit on this earth. Yeah. It comes to those who seek him, those who have a pure heart, those who have a good spirit, those who are not having darkness in them trying to portray this. Like, if you're a wolf in sheep's clothing, you ain't getting none of this. Yeah. Zero. Let's read First John 5, please. First John 5, only 14 through 17. I want you to read. First John chapter five. This is sin. This is your precept book. First John. I want y'all to read this. It says, I want all y'all to remember. A lot of y'all say, well, all, every people say it's all sin the same. It don't matter. No, you don't know your scriptures. You don't know your book. All sin is not the same. Let's read, please. First this, John 5, 14 through 17. Yes, let's read it, please. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will. Oh, wait a minute. This is the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to what? His will, not our own. Leviticus 11, he told you what to eat, what not to eat. But yet, <clears throat> oh, can you please bless this pork? Can you please bless this shrimp? Can you please bless these scallops? Can you please bless all this poison that you told me not to eat? That ain't according to his will. That's according to your will. He ain't blessing that. Go ahead and read, please. It says he hears us, verse 15. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Yes. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death. So there's some sin that is not unto death. You know, if you still, you, hey, brother, don't do that, man. You know, you need to not do that because the Lord is going to judge you. Hey, brother, look, man, I know you was cheating on your wife, man, but I'm telling you, the Lord right now, brother, you're going to deal with you later. Hey, brother, man, look. I know that you cursed out your mama. You understand? 
But you need to go repent of that, brother, because you're going to give it to ghosts if you don't. So there's some sins that you can repent for, but there's others you can't. Like when Lot mm -hmm. slept with his daughter, the Lord said at that time that it had not been done. And he said at that time, any man who goes into his daughter is cursed. See, those are different sins. That's a curse. Mm -hmm. A curse and, and other sins can be forgiven, but curses, that's a wrap. Certain things you just, you can't come back from. Any man who rapes a child, you can't come back from that. That's a wrap. I'm not, hey, listen, the Lord has straightway wrote down what is a curse, what is sin. He said that a man don't go into his auntie. He's not to go into the, the, the sister, his sister who has the same father. You're not to go into your sister. He has straightway rules. Some sin is the death and some sin is the judgment. Let's keep reading, please. Verse 16. All sin is not the same. If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. That means you warned that him you so can he can pray, live. But you can pray right. for them. You pray, that's it. It says, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. Mm. All unrighteousness is sin, and there. Wait a minute. Some unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness. I thought. Is sin. Uh, uh, okay, so go ahead. And there is a sin not unto death. There is a sin not to death. We know that whosoever is born of God sins not, but he that is begotten of Yahuwah guards himself. Guard what? So you got to be born again. You got to be born again. You got to guard yourself. You got to guard your spirit. Don't let nobody take your what? Your crown. You got to guard yourself. Go ahead. And that wicked one touches him not. Just touches him what? Not. Okay. This is what I'm talking about. And this is what the Lord is giving us. You know? Verse 19 says, and we know that we are of Yahuwah and the whole world lies in wickedness. Yes. 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 So I'm going to read one more. Enoch 102, please. Let's go to the book of Enoch. We'll read, we'll close out with this one. Enoch 102, 6 through 7. The book of Enoch, chapter 102, 6 through 7. All praise the most high. It's a beautiful thing the way the Lord has got his children waking up, man, and just coming together and loving each other and <clears throat> praising him and outstretch and learning the word so we have life versus being around here, going to these churches, these institutions, these groups, even these camps, and these men will take the word, destroy it to fit their own agenda. Or they'll just say it out of ignorance because they don't know no better. Because a lot of our camps, even my our, our brothers and sisters, they don't read a lot of the books we read. They don't read Jasha, Jubilees, Enoch. They tell you, oh, we all know about that. We just stick with 1611. Okay, well, Lord says many highways of knowledge. I guess you're just going to stick on that one road. But I'm going to jump on the highway. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking the back road. Let's go. Exactly. 102. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to read 6 through 7, please. Fear not souls of the righteous. Fear not souls of the what? Righteous. If you're righteous and you're walking and you're trying to learn, you fear not. Go ahead and read. But wait patient hope for the day of your death in righteousness. Wait a minute. Wait with patient hope for the day of your what? Death in righteousness. See, when the ancestors would die, they'll tell their children, don't do this, this, and this. I did this and this, but I repented. But one thing they didn't have, they didn't have fear. They knew no, they was going to lay down and they was going to be waking up with the Messiah and their children. This is how you need to be. When you see people dying around you, stop crying and all that. I know it's easier said than done, but they're resting. They don't have this going on. Well, set a time for grieving. Don't let it overwhelm Don't let it overwhelm you is what I'm saying, because yeah. they are going to be seen again by you. Yes. Do you will see them. You're going to grieve. You're going to do, but let it go. Let it go. You know, when you said to Abraham, they, when, when, when Jacob died, I think they mourned for Jacob for 70 days. You know, each patriarch you were here when they died, they mourned for them for a certain period. Mm -hmm. And then they let it go. Why? Yeah. Because they were wrestling with the forefathers and each one of them are going to come back to govern over the people. So we know they're going to be resurrected. Keep reading, please. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 102. Go ahead. Verse 6. Grieve not because your souls descend in great trouble with groaning, lamentation, and sorrow to the receptacle of the dead. Now, that's the receptacles I told you guys about. Whenever you die, you go to three places. You go to one that's beautiful or with springs and garden. If you reverence the Lord, this is where you go to rest. You know nothing about this world. Or one that's so okay. It's beautiful, but nothing like the first one. It's for those who never rejected the Lord, but yet at the same time, they never, ever said, you know what? We, we all in. But they were good people. They go there. But the wicked, they bust hell wide open the way. They got receptacles down there holding them to judgment day. 
Go ahead and read. The pit. It's called the pits. Go ahead and read. In your lifetime, your bodies have not received a recompense in proportion to your goodness. Yes. But in the period of your existence have sinners existed. Yes. In the period of execration and of punishment. Yes. And when you die, sinners say concerning you, as we die, the righteous die. Yes. What profit have they, have they no in their work? They have no understanding. Yeah. Go ahead. Behold, like us, they expire in sorrow and in darkness. Yes. What advantage have they over us? Mm. Henceforward, are we equal? What will be within their grasp and what before their eyes forever? And this is what a lot of atheists and people who don't have faith, this is what they think about people who are supposed to be righteous. Go mm -hmm. ahead. For behold, they are dead and never will they again perceive the light. I say unto you, sinners, you have been satisfied with meat and drink, with mm. the plunder of men and rapine. With sin, with what does sin. rapine mean again? I think that's taking other Let's people's take people, land. other people's lands. It's not rape, it's rapine. Mm -hmm. Sister uh Pentetta, Pentica, excuse me. I'm sorry, Pentica, Sister Pentica. Sister Pentica straighten us out on that one. Go ahead. With the acquisition of wealth and with the sight of good days, have you not marked the righteous how their end is in peace? Yes. For no oppression is found in them even to the day of their death. Even the day of their what? Death. Even to the day of their death, they're not oppressed. They go in peace. Keep reading. They perish and are as if they were not, while their souls descend in trouble to the receptacle of the dead. Oh, praises. So I want you guys to understand that there's a promise coming to the people. And we need not sit and worry about things that we cannot change. What we need to worry about are the things that we can change. So we want to go to Baruch, give you guys some understanding about, you know, a bunch of things that are in the spirit realm. Another good lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got something out of it tonight. Um, I really do. Moderator pinned a comment. I don't see. What is that? Um, it's at the top. Yes, she says she's a great reader. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. She'd be straightening me on some words. Fasting April 5th. Oh, praises. Oh, praises. Over April 6th. Oh, they, she just put in the dates. Oh, okay. All oh, praises. Also, Regina time. Padgett, just, um, I think you are on the list. Mm -hmm. You should have received an e-bike. Yes. But Send me an email with the best way to reach you yes. so I can send you the address for the Passover. I'm almost certain she's on that. What you pulling up? The e-bike? No, no, no. Oh. I'm not doing any of that. Oh, I'm not okay. doing that, sweetheart. All right. We'll do all that later. Just write it down. Wow. Pantika said her dad used to get morning sickness and varicose veins when uh -huh. her mother was pregnant. I've never heard of a man getting varicose, varicose veins. veins. Man. Wow. He, he was eating a lot. He was eating a lot. His neck was getting swollen. Pantika, what was No, going on? them varicose How veins normally show up on your leg. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I, he must be light skinned or something. I don't even know. We can see him on us. Hey, ain't that something he got? I'm glad I didn't get no varicose veins. I know one thing, boy. Man, between my legs, felt like I had varicose veins. Man, that baby felt like when she was having that baby, it's like a big melon kept coming between my legs. It was the weirdest thing in the world. And you hear about things like that, but to experience it, mm -hmm. you know, you can talk about it and you can have people in a movie or something. But when you really experience something like that, you realize that, man, that spirit world is real because it had to be spiritual because, you know, but that's why the Lord says that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. They're separate, but they're one, and it's a mystery. Then it says that a husband and a wife, they're separate, but they're one, and it's what? A mystery. Yeah. Because they're one in spirit. And man, I'm telling you, my spirit show bear with my wife. That's why ever since I met her, she never been able to go home. <laughs> she ain't been home since. She tried to go home and turn right back around. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. one time we got an argument when she had the baby. So she was young and hard here, and I tried to tell her, you know, give him direction. She didn't want to hear it because I was 10 years, I always been 10 years older than my wife. So I could kind of know things. Um, she told me she went home to her mama. What you said that when you went home to your mama? Like, why did I come here? I'm yeah. sitting there in the yeah. twin bed, sharing the room with my yeah. sister and the baby. I said, I'm going And back this home. is something I want to tell you guys and gals. Yeah. Whenever you have family problems or you have anything going on with your spouse, do not, do not go to your family with it. Now, we're not mm -hmm. saying sit, sit there and let a man abuse you. No, 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 no. Situation, then no. leave. Well, I'm just saying that because yeah. some people, you can assume they would know that, but. All right, this is no, not what no. I'm talking about. What I'm talking yeah. about is this. What I'm talking about is if you guys got arguments, uh, what normal or yes. man, I'm not, because you shouldn't be there if it's abusive. Exactly. So I don't even have to get into that. Exactly. You shouldn't be there. So what I'm talking about is when you have a married man and wife having an agreement or a couple 
who is about to be who engaged or doing it. Don't yeah. go to your family with your problems. As soon as you forgive that person, they still looking they still at them and got holding a grudge it. on them. Yeah. They have not let it go. So you causing problems when they come around, visiting family, they roll their eyes at them. Yeah, and they ain't no good. She ain't, she ain't no damn good. You know, they made that on their tongue. Yeah. You forgiving them, but they haven't forgotten. That's right. So, so true. if you are a person, you shouldn't be with somebody who's abusing you. So we don't have to talk about that. You know, yeah. but since my wife said it, let's talk about it. If you're in a situation, that's why the Lord said a man can be what in his home? A lion. A lion. A lion does what? He tears up. He ravages. Yeah. He's throwing stuff. He's got the children scared when they're walking out the house in the middle of the night. He's got his wife. You understand? You know, I remember I used to tell my wife, she used to say, you yell. You got abusive tendencies because you yell. I said, no, I'm yelling because you tend your junk. You don't listen. I know things. So when a brother or Israelite man try to tell you something, because Oprah Winfrey and all of them say, that's abusive tendencies, abusive tendencies. When we don't listen to us, we get a little louder. Then we don't listen, we get a little louder. Next thing you know, we would yell. I did that in my youth. I don't do it now. I might do every blue moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I get upset and she ain't listening to me. But what we do is we're doing it because we love you and we want to protect you. And so Oprah Winfrey, what does she teach that when a man does certain things, what's it's going on? It's progressive. It's progressive. And I told my wife this. I said, look at me, look at me. I said, I've been with you at that time 14 years. I said, I've been with you 14 years. Have I ever laid my hands on you? She was like, no. I said, have you ever been scared that I'm going to hit you? No. <laughs> I say, so how can you say abusive? I said, you know when a man is abusive, you wake up the next day, you're next two hours in a room unconscious. Do you know when a man is abusive? You're laid out. And next thing you know, your mouth is not. When you know when a man is abusive is when your children are so scared, they're shaking in their feet. You know when a man is abusive? When a man sits there and chokes you or grabs you and holds you and you got marks on your body. I said, have I ever done anything like that? What'd you say? No, but um, she, didn't, she didn't get it until I actually talked to these two women who were abused. And what they do? They laughed at you, didn't they? They laughed at me. And I said, oh, they started telling me the stuff they went through. She said, uh, men aren't progressive. There's no abusive. such thing as progressive. They, just are. they are. You gonna what did I tell you? Yeah, there's no such thing as progression. They started telling me the stuff they went through, and I was like, Oh, he ain't never do that. Never. If a man is never. gonna so what? so if a man yeah. is gonna abuse you, you're gonna know up front. Yeah, he's gonna do little things and hit you. Just like a woman, if she's abusive, when you say know. something, she's gonna be scratching you and hitting you and all of this stuff. That means, you know what? I don't need to be here because it's not going to get better. It gets worse. Yeah. It gets worse. And then you find yourself in a place you don't. And nobody here should have their children in that situation. These babies are innocent vessels. They did not ask to be born. They did not ask to come in this world. They did not deserve to be sitting there hungry, starving, because you put your priorities on a man or you put your priorities on a woman. Your priorities yeah. need to be your babies because they came from you and they did not ask to be here. And so there's no such thing as tendencies. Either you are or you aren't. But what women, our women misconstrue is our men who are protectors. And we yell a little bit because we say, baby, don't wear that. If you wear that, I know so much. These men are going to be looking at you and you can get raped. I don't want you raped. I don't, I don't even want men looking at you like that while I'm with you. Please put on something modest. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want nothing to happen with protectors. It's part of our DNA. But the world will have you think that man is being controlling because he's telling you that is not a good idea to wear that. Your women saying, you know, listen, I don't watch you watching that pornography. You watching that stuff. And then I look off. I be catch you looking at other women. I catch you that because it feeds a spirit. And so when your wife tells you something, listen. I don't like when you sit there and conversate with that woman all the time. You know, you say y'all are friends. But the Lord told me, didn't, is it written when you take on a wife or husband take on a wife that that's your friend, that's your family? Why you got to be talking to that person all the time on the phone? If that person is not your spouse and not your family, you're not supposed to be doing it. You out of order. You out of order, period. And I'm going to tell you something. You can take it any way you want, any way you want, because I really don't care. There's no such thing as a man having a male friend, female friend and a female having a male friend. Ain't no such thing. Because as soon as you go into a spot or go through something, that person looking for what, Sister Micaiah? An opportunity. opportunity. Unless they're a rainbow person. I don't care what they is. And sometimes even if they Come are. on, they still do it too. Yeah. You understand me. 
Ain't no man gonna lay next to you in the bed. You talking about you coming over, you going through it, and you in your underwear. And he's a man. And you think he ain't gonna try you? Or you coming to him because you sitting there laying all your problems on this man or this woman laying him on this, on this, uh, a man laying him on this female because she's supposed to be his friend. But aren't you more vulnerable in times like that? That's why the Lord said, don't put yourself in those situations. He said, don't even go eat. We just read this. Don't go eat with a, a, a woman and a man. It's only supposed to go eat out together. You're not supposed to be alone together. Why? He said, because you're going to take a man. You see, everything today is out of order. I guess. But they made it like it's order. It's, it's natural, but it's unnatural. It's not even normal. That's why unnatural things happen when you're doing unnatural things. Yes. People don't get this. This is the real world we live in. We're humans. We're not perfect. Satan is waiting for what? An opportunity to turn you. If you put yourself in certain situations, you're going to have certain situations happen to you. Yes. And I'm telling you something, folks. We got a lot of people calling us with a lot of regret. I got a lot of married women saying, I got this brother. My husband got cancer. He had this. And, you know, we weren't getting along. So this other brother was, you know, giving me Bible studies and we studying together. But, you know, some just happened. Oh, order. Some just happened. Well, first of all, why are you studying with a man on your own that's not your husband? You're already out of order. Thirdly, if you got a person who's sickly, what kind of curses do you think you heaping on yourself when you're kicking them when they die? Did not the Lord say through death do you part? Through sickness and what? Health. Mm -hmm. Same thing with these men. Y'all sitting out here. You thinking that it's green on the other side. You want to step out on your wife. And then the next thing you know, you bringing some home. Then you want that woman to love you and look at you the same. She'll never look at you the same. She'll never love you the same. She may forgive you, but I'm going to tell you something. That woman will never forget. Women don't think like us, folks. Men. Men don't think like women. Sure the Lord gives me how a woman thinks, and he gives me exactly how a man thinks. Do I not know how you be taking all the time, Sister mm -hmm. From day one. Inside and out. The Lord gives me My everything goodness. a woman thinks of. He gives it to me. I know what she need before she even ask. Mm -hmm. I know when she cold before she even say something to me. Yes. I know if she hungry and she ain't even said nothing to me. I know if she's not feeling good and she ain't said nothing to me. And I know if she ain't thinking right, even if I'm not in her vicinity, because the Lord gives it to me. He shows me all these things. So I'm telling you guys and gals, the reason that the Lord equates himself as the bride groom and us as the bride, because he takes a marriage seriously. He says he hates adultery. He hates fornication. Yes. So we got to get ourselves together. Protect your children out here. Yes. Stop letting your children go to everybody's house. If I don't give you no other wisdom than that, it's too much going on in these other houses. I got people out here right now, got their babies walking around in outfits, talking about their cheerleaders, little debutantes, and they naked. Y'all think it's cute. What do you think the Lord going to do to you? People don't know what they're storing up for themselves when they got their own children walking around half naked. You're going to be dealt with because those babies rely on you. It's a corruption of innocence. And, you, and you're not helping them, period. If anything, you're enforcing what the Gentiles are giving you. Our people, our women couldn't even be uncovered. Now I got my little girls walk around in little shorts and this eight, nine, ten years old. Dressing and looking like women with lipstick and makeup on. Mm -hmm. What the hell the world coming to? I'm going to tell you what it's coming to. It's coming to a damn end. I had to curse on that because I'm pissed. I hate what I see. The most high hates what he sees. This world is corrupt. and It has to be taken out. It has yeah. to be destroyed. It has to be eradicated. It has to be clean. But he started with us first. And the more you see the, and the more you understand, the more angles you see why you. things were in place with the Torah. Yes. Like, why did he go through and get rid Come of on. whole bloodlines? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And who did he use to get rid of whole bloodlines? Exactly. Us. Some some places he said, don't take anything. Not out even of the cattle. Place. Kill the cattle, the animals, the children, everything. I don't even, why? Because you are your father's what? Seed. You see how darkness progresses. Look at look at these these people. I seen a young kid, YT kid, the other day. I ain't gonna lie. They found a severed head in this house and a hand and something else. He was talking like like he drinking coffee about what happened. He said what? he just wanted to do it. He just wanted to do it for the hell of it. 
Wow. 17 years old, parents crying like babies. They didn't know what was going on. They had no clue. And they he was staying with them? They Daddy walked in the kitchen and seen him and say. Oh, my goodness. And These then the, the officer. So, so what I'm saying, he looked like an innocent kid. But there's a spirit. There's a spirit. He was doing that like it was nothing. Mm -hmm. He was talk, told the cops, oh, oh, yeah, well, I just did this so many times to him, and I took this and did this to him, and he My was very goodness. graphic about it, but he was talking like that, like and they, it was no big you know, and they gave him soda and coffee and tea and trinkets and stuff to eat. What? Yeah, man, listen, when they put him in the car, after that happened, they gave him water and all of this. I want y'all to understand who y'all around. I want y'all to understand exactly who you're surrounded by. Mm. Hmm? And then I got these so-called oh, sisters calling me that. because oh, they don't God. marry these men, and now they got regret. Major regret. Don't come to me. You made that bed. That's your husband. If he ain't cheating on you, you decide to make a marriage certificate with that person. I'm not going to tell you to leave your husband. That's above my pay grade. But I will say, as one say, well, he tried to read the scriptures, and, and he a pastor. And she's like, he, didn't, he can't teach me. I said, well, brother, I, said, I told the YT guy, she told you the truth that you can't teach her. It's not given to you. But at the same time, since she married you, she got to respect you. Otherwise, she should have never married you. The Lord said straight, well, he don't care who a man's husband's wife is. Because all through generations, Esau would marry some of our people and other people. Edom, Rome, all, whatever, he has rules for marriages. If you make that bed, you got to lay in it. Unless that person abusing you. Or unless that person you understand is trying to take you from who? The most high. Teaching you stuff or another God. You can leave them. If they trying to give you another God, you can leave them. If they're trying to sit there and tell you things you understand or abusing you, you can leave them. If they're committing adultery on you. Now, the scriptures say, if that man says you can leave. But I'm going to say this. You sure say, if you think it, you've already done it. So. All oh, praises. I'm just going through a few areas. Sometimes the spirit getting me to speak on things. All praise to the most high. You know? Um, so I just want our people right now, since they're waking up, <clears throat> you know, a lot of them are really upset that they married of other nations. And the Lord say, remember when we read um, the scriptures, it said to be exalted. It'd be a time exalted when we mix with them. But then we'd be separating from them. That's in Baruch 2 in the latter days. That, that the time, see, we once thought it was exalted to mix with them. That's what the scriptures say. We thought, so. well, we need to integrate. We need to integrate. Hmm. Not understanding when we were on our own, we had more. As soon as we mixed with them, that's when we lost everything. Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing the wickedness of these nations. Now imagine what goes on in the houses with these relationships. You know how many times I don't heard these black women tell me that all of a sudden that, that husband called them the, the, N, the NIG word? They say he just he was calling me like he got off on it. You know, it didn't do that until we got married. I'm just telling you guys and gals, man, y'all got to wake up to what's going on. You know, I'm a person like this. I know that there's good people of every race. Why? Because I've had people of every race help me. Mm -hmm. And a good friend of mine, like I said, is a YT guy. Really good. He's a great guy. When my babies were gone, he helped me out. So there's good people, as we just read, of all nations. But yet there's a seed. And that seed, sometimes, you understand, the majority of them are just not right. Yeah. And we see that what's going on in the Americas. America is the number one place for pedophilia. So saying that, who are buying these babies? And I know I keep saying this, but this, this vexes me. So if it vexes me, what do you think it's doing to the most high right now? Hmm. He's seeing this. These babies are hollering to him. You got innocent souls that are being corrupted. And then he showed me a vision one night of how they take them and even dash them against the wall like he's going to do their babies. He showed me the vision. He wouldn't let me look in the room, but he let me see that the man was looking like a normal guy. YT guy, he looked normal, but all of a sudden I seen a demon come on his face and he grabbed the baby and he threw him at the wall. But the Lord would let me see the end result. But he said, do you see what's going on? Hmm. Do you see what I see? This is why I'm coming to clean this whole earth out. And I'm starting in America. I'm going to clean it out. It's a, he says, in, it's in, what do you say? It's in. <sighs> 
He said that it is filled with rats. It is filled with rats. It's contaminated. America is contaminated, folks. And they've contaminated all the other nations now. And now you see exactly who's behind everything. The music industry, the television industry, the, the medicines that they're putting out, mm -hmm. the food that they're taking and poisoning, the air that they're poisoning. They're going to other lands, taking out people and they have no mercy. Where the babies are crying and screaming in some places they're starving. Mm. It's just so much. It's happening. so much happening. But the Lord sees it all. Three none none, none of it's going to get or be gone away with. That's why this eclipse is coming over on April the 8th, right after we have the baptism. But judgment has begun. The birth and pains yes. are intensifying. They're here. And so that's why we know that there's a certain demographic that's causing certain things. But I want y'all to understand Israel, some of us way worse than them. Mm hmm. When I say darkness get darker, when, when we go dark, we go dark. Mm -hmm. It's way worse than them. So it's just not them. It's us too. That's why you say I'm starting with what? My house first. It's time for us to wake up, come out of darkness. It's time for us to gravitate and levitate to those who walk in the light. And understand that the things we're seeing out that the Lord has given them to us. But if you don't have eyes to see and ears to hear, you can never comprehend. All right, many call, few are chosen. So on the Passover is we filled up. We got one opening, right? One which I'm opening. Sure, uh -huh. Okay, one opening only, which I may not even fill it just in case, you know. Well, you know, hopefully everybody shows up, you know. And uh, But anybody, if you can't come, please let us know. Uh, we we probably could have had it for 300 some people because there's so many people want to come, but we just don't have the openings. How many we up to the baptism? You know how many on that yet? It was about 100 the last I Okay, about 100 or so. I'll praise to the most high. You know, that's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. When you got that many souls converting, you understand? But one thing I want you to know about baptism. Baptism is symbolic of taking off the old clothes and you're putting on new white garments. But like I always say, if you're a rainbow person, you just get dipped in that water, you're a red rainbow. If you are a liar, you get dipped in water, you're a wet liar. If you're an adulterer mm -hmm. and you get dipped in water and you don't change, you just a wet adulterer. Change does not come from the outside. That's why Yeshua say you worry about the outside of the cup, but I worry about the inside of the cup. Mm -hmm. Change comes from within. The Holy Spirit has to convict you after that. That's why you might be born by water and what? Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to change you. That's mm -hmm. what the New Testament is. It's a spiritual conviction to yeah. follow the laws and do right. Where before it was the letter of the law, second edge say it was just a schoolmaster. Yeah. But now we need to be doing on the inside because we want to do it. All praise to the Most High. All right, we got any questions here or what? What do we got? Do you answer? Yeah, that? it's another question. This is go ahead. Asked, can you go over any scriptures that talk about Yahushua dying on the tree versus a cross? Well, what about it? He, he died on the tree. So I mean, the cross has come from the Roman Catholic Church. That was in, integrated. It was given to us by the Roman Catholic Church. That's their symbol. That's their symbol. We didn't do the cross. Period. When you read the old books, it said he was hung on a tree. So the new books say a cross, but that's Roman Catholic Church. Simple as that. Why do you think the Christian crusade, they always had what? The cross. Did not the Lord say we're going to be judging, we're going to be serving gods of wood and what? Stone. What is the cross originally made of? Wood. How many of us walked around with a wooden cross? Or have it on our neck or on the wood? That's that cross. We use the menorah, the candlesticks. The cross was given, that was a wrong. Now, the origin of the cross it goes way back to ancient Mayan times. In the ancient Mayan times, they had a symbol in the heavens. It's four big dippers. In the middle is the North Star. The North Star looks like a cross. That's how bright it looks like a cross. So they would take the big dippers and they would make a symbol that looks like a swastika. So the swastika, if you look at it, is also a cross. So the cross and the swastika, you understand, were symbolically the same in those times. Get this book, America, the True Old World. You'll learn this. You'll see all the symbolisms in it. So a lot of cultures use the swastika and the cross for religious reasons. The Vatican came in later and used it when they ever they went through what they call a Christian crusade and they killed thousands of people in the name of who? Jesus. And they would do what when they tortured us? They would burn what? A cross. Matter of fact, when your monster can, what do they have? A cross what? Inverted. Yeah. When you drink it, it's inverted. And that's when you see those three sixes on it. 
you know? So the cross has nothing to do with our people. That is a Roman thing. Just look up the history. Look up the history of the cross. Google it. Oh, my favorite word, Google it. <laughs> Google it. Simply because yeah. a lot of these scriptures have been tampered with. Well, they got to go through the Vatican first. Yeah. It goes through the Vatican first. The first thing the Vatican is going to put in by way of Mary with the virgin birth. Right. Next thing they're going to do is they're going to put take out a tree and put the cross in. Next thing they're going to do, listen, there's many little areas they take out. See, they can change it so much, but we still get to meet what the Most High wants. So even if they did change it, you know, who cares a cross or a tree anyway? Right. Who He died for you, right? His blood was shed for you, right? Mm -hmm. Huh? He came back in three days later and told you he would, right? Symbolic of the resurrection, right? All don't swallow the don't 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 straight at the net and swallow the camel. Yeah. Stop worried about the little things that have nothing to do with salvation. That yeah. has nothing to do with salvation with on the tree of the cross. They got nothing to do with get you in the kingdom. But it's a good question, though. All praise to the most high. Yeah. Good question. I'm sure some of the apocryphal books may say it, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but it's interjection, so we know we learn it. So it is what it is. All right. Next question. Got another one? Yeah. I said, I wish I were there to get me and my children baptized. It's okay, sweetheart. If you can't get baptized, the Lord knows in your heart. See, you you know, my thing is, is this. If the Lord knows those who truly can't get dipped in water by the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he knows these things. So this is why grace comes in, repentance and salvation. Yeshua will still watch over you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And she blesses you when you can't do things, but you do them in what? The Spirit. That's what's important. He knows you want to, but he knows you don't have the means. So you're going to be judged according to your what? Ways. To your ways. You're going to be weighing yep. the balance. So don't worry about that. Um, I, Aisha Lewis, I think, it yeah. says, what about when you are alone in marriage? That's why I study with y'all. I go so many, I've got so many questions. So I guess she's asking what well, she was saying about studying with yeah, well, when you're alone in marriage, the Bible says a husband be saved to a wife and a wife be saved to a husband if they're unbeliever. Now, that doesn't mean they're sinning and doing things. Why? For the children's sake. So saying that, this is why you just study and let your husband see the truth in you and the light. And hopefully that Holy Spirit convict him to want to learn too. See, whenever you try to force somebody to do something to sit them down, remember this is a called out what? Assembly. That person may not be called in order to assemble. But if that person is not cheating or doing things out there and they live in right, but yet they're just not a believer like you, they can still be saved through you. But they can't be out here doing things against the Torah. So saying that, um, you just be patient. You know, if you're not patient, you see the way you convert a person, it's like when someone's mean or saying a bad word. What's Proverbs 15 say? A kind word extinguishes all fire. The same thing when you're dealing with this word and you want to give it to your spouse. If they're not listening and they don't want to well, learn. She's talking about asking questions. What do you mean? Because huh? you know how you say a woman shouldn't be studying with a man or at, um, if you if a woman has a question, she needs to go to her husband. Well, she can. That's what she. Well, text me. About. Text me or text the elder. You text. And also, there's yeah, spiritual ask, women. Yeah, yeah spiritual women like, like my I wife. A, I, uh, a, I mean, you text and ask YouTube questions. YouTube channel yeah. as well where I talk about yeah. that. So you, you fellowship with people who Who's are in the also spirit. Yeah. in this walk. To yeah. get there a lot go. of those questions answered, but also pray about it and continue to read and study. I know a lot of times I'll have questions, pray on it, open the book, and it's it right comes there. right to it's the right answer. There. You see, the Bible says that you need no man to teach you anything, that the anointing that's on you teaches you what? All things. Yeah. If you guys have questions, I give you the ministry phone number. Text me, ask me questions. If you don't, ask my wife. If she if she, if she doesn't know something, she'll come to me. And a lot of times, if I'm not sure about something, I'll talk to her about discussing, and then we get a resolution. So you text me and you ask a question when you don't know. And um, I will know this ministry phone number by heart sooner or later. <laughs> I don't know by heart. It's 770-276-5840. My ministry phone number is 770-276-5840. All praises to the most high. In my email, I'll put it in the comments here, but it's Micaiah Yehuda at uh I'm sorry, Micaiah Yehuda23 at gmail.com. Yeah, so you text me or you text my wife. Um, you need to give me your phone number too. Right? Um, I don't really want to okay, okay, cool. That's what I'm saying. I have a Just ministry email phone. Email me yeah, and then right. yeah. And I have a ministry phone, so you guys can just text me and we work things out. So 
Um, ladies, if you don't have a man to talk to, if you don't, if you have questions for a man, you text me. And what I'll do is I'll give you the answers. You understand? If you want to study and go through some things, that's when I take you to my wife. I believe in order. I know that sometimes emotions can be tied up when especially there's a spiritual person on the other end. It's easier to fall into um, traps and things of that nature. So you have to do things in order. And the Holy Spirit teaches me how to do things orderly. Um, because right now you got a lot of Jeremiah 23 verse 1 say the pastor scattered the sheep. And my favorite one, Micah 311, say each one teach for his gain of a quarter. When you go to Isaiah 56 verse 10, it says they're like dogs. They don't even bark and tell you what's coming. So what they do is they want these women to come to them. When they come to them to give them spiritual stuff, they end up taking advantage of them and they tear up homes. You know, one of the worst stories I ever heard, I ever heard um, when I was, I, I've always been, I've been a maintenance supervisor for years. And what happened was I would, um, I would sit with Mr. Boyd every day and talk to him. And one thing he always talked about, he would show me these pictures, man, he was just, his first wife, he was married twice, but that first wife, I kid you not, he was so in love with that woman. I mean, he really, he said the sun and moon revolved around her. And I would say, what happened? What happened to her? He goes, you know, I worked as a car salesman. He said, back in those days, you didn't really let your woman work. So every year I got a new car. He said, I always make sure she had money in her pocket. I made sure the girls never wanted, because he had three daughters, never wanted anything. And he said, you know, one day I'm at work and my brother called me and he said, I said, and I, and I, I think he got embarrassed. He said, Hey brother, man, you might want to go up to such and such gas station, man. I'll see your pastor driving your car. He said, what? He said, man, your pastor driving the car. He said, I know my wife was doing these Bible studies, but I figured she was the church and it was no big deal. I wasn't worried about it. So he says, I go. And I, and at the time he was a police officer at the time he was an officer. So he said, I went, no, at this time, he was a car dealership. He became officer later. He said, so I went up there, and he said, I seen this man getting in my car. He said, I couldn't believe it. He said, I, did, he said, I was shaking. I wanted to do something. But he said, what I did was I, I followed him. He said, I followed him, and he ended up going back to a motel. And I said, man, I know you kicked the door down. I know you did something. What you kicked the door down? What, what, what you do, boy? I said, some gunfire was going on. What, what, what happened? I said, I said, what, what, what? And he said, no, 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 none of that happened. He said, I I just sat back and he said, it hit me so hard. I really, to be honest with you, I couldn't really think. And he said, I was just crying so much because I can believe that woman who I, he said, heaven and earth passed. And that's, she she said she was the only light. He, she was just light to me. And he said, so I just complete my light, you understand, was being dimmed. And that this man who we put our trust in, this is a man who ended up sleep with my wife. And he said he ended up confronting her about it. And he said, because he didn't go to the room, none of that. He just, he said he didn't say nothing for three days. And she was asking, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he finally told her. And she was like, and she got more upset because he didn't knock on the door or do something about it. But in his mind, he was like, no, it was nothing to do because all it was, he said, I had three daughters to think about, three little girls. And if I did something, my babies would have been out in this world by themselves. And he said, I had to think of my babies and not of me. And he said, so we end up sleeping in different rooms, but eventually we separated. But he was telling me how after that day forward, he never put his trust in men and he really got it. So we got to be very careful when you call yourself going to counseling, you go to these counselors. Do you know that most of these counselors have been divorced three and four times, but yet they're trying to give you advice. You go into these men who are corrupt, who are taken from the people, get fat off the sheep. Who, who are wolves in sheep's clothing. Not all, you may, you're gonna have some good men out there who really are not like that, but it's very rare. But you can have some good men, you, you do, but it's rare. So that's why the Lord gave us rules, how to walk, how to talk and how to move, so we do not fall into those ways. All right, thank you guys again. You know, it's getting late, so. Um, you know, this lesson was spiritual because you're going this way and that way, but we read the word and getting understanding and. The Lord has given me extra stuff mm -hmm. to talk to people who need it. Because a lot of this is spiritual. Yes. There's things that need to be said. And a lot of times the Lord is like Magneto. You know, I always say that. It's like the Lord, I'm here, and the Lord has given me everybody's thoughts and their feelings. And sometimes he had me say so much, and that's why people say, I had a lot of questions. But it's like when you did the lesson, all of them was answered. Yeah. 
You know, that's the most high. That's the Holy Spirit. We're one body. We're one mind. And now we're one what? One spirit. We're one spirit. We're family now. All praise to the most high. All right. So the Passover, um, so far we've got everything except for veggies, bowls, and what else? Veggies, waters. We need to get the vegetables. The waters um, and drinks. <laughs> waters, drinks, veggies, um, pies and stuff like that. We're going to make, because we can't have leaven. So we're going to do sweet potato pies. So we can't have any leaven in the bread. Um, and we're going to do... Um, I'm going to do the, we're doing lamb. I got leg of lambs, lamb chops. I'm going to do garlic mash. We're going to do greens for bitter herbs and cabbage. Uh, and cabbage. We're going to do cabbage also. So it should be a good menu, a good menu. All praise to the most high. And um, so everybody who's helped us out, who continue to help give to us, we want to thank you for that. Yes. Uh, your donations have helped Made the ministry so Seriously. much. I really want to thank all of you. I would do call outs, but you all know who's been learning that the Lord said, when you do arms, you do them in secret. If you do them in secret, I reward you openly. So we don't want to mention what we do. The Lord said, don't do that. Or it doesn't matter what you gave. So we're going to do things according to scripture. But I want to tell you guys, I have to say this. I want to thank you yes. for all your donations. <clears throat> You've been helping us. And no, we still got to get the stuff for the, the pass or the, the baptism. You know, brother Asher said he got it. Mm -hmm. So he's going to do it. But I'm going to help him a little bit. Try right. to help him, too. For the baptism, because he's cooking, supposed to cook everything. So um, he's got the baptism and the Passover is one of the major ones. But thank you guys for helping us out so much. Mm -hmm. And even with, when we feed the homeless, your donations, because what we do is we just put it up for the next round. Just like if you give us water, food, anything, we store it. So when we go out, we have the provisions. I want to thank you guys for all your alms. And the beautiful thing is you've done it with charity. What is charity, Sister Makaya? It's love. You've done it with love. So I'm going to thank you. My wife is thanking mm -hmm. you. And the most high is thanking you. He's thanking you first and then us. Remember, we super, he supersedes all of us. Yeah. The most high wants to tell you thank you. And all of you here who give it from your heart, who give it to your heart, you will be rewarded. Let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father in heaven, blessed be you, Adonai Yahuwah. Heavenly Father, the God of Israel. Father, thank you so much for bringing us out of this darkness. Thank you, Father, for pouring your light on us. Father, as we went through this lesson tonight, I want to thank you so much for giving us visions of the future, showing us that women will no longer have pain, showing us, Heavenly Father, that dew will come upon us and heal us, showing us, Heavenly Father, that your water that you pour out, Father, is healing water. Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you so much for binding any demons and spirits that are around your people, Father, casting them into the lake of fire, casting them into dungeons for now and then later to the lake of fire. Thank you, Father, for the Rowak Kodesh, the Holy Spirit. Thank you for Yeshua. Yes. Thank you, Father, for that salvation that only comes from you. Blessed be you, Yeshua. Blessed are king and priest, for you are the anointed. You are the holy, for you are the Lord of all spirits. I pray that your spirit that you poured upon us right now and the handmaids and servants cast out demons and more so than all cast out fear. For you said, Heavenly Father, you did not give us the gift of fear. You gave us, Father, everlasting life and you gave us, Heavenly Father, through the word, faith. Thank you, Abba. Thank you for lifting us. Thank you for taking us off the ground. Thank you for putting our bones together. Thank you for putting flesh on, our, on us, Father. And thank you for the four winds. Father, now we can walk, we can talk, and now we can truly breathe. Thank you, Abba, for giving us glasses in this dark and cloudy day. I want to ask that you please bless everyone here with help. Bless everyone here, Heavenly Father, in their finances. I pray that you bless everyone here, Heavenly Father, with their children. I pray that you bless the marriages here who go through intentions and you take those demons and cast them away. I pray for those who engage and those who, who are your future, future families, Father, that you bless them. And do not let Satan come between any of them. For you said, Father, that we are building blocks of a nation and that we represent you. Thank you, Abba, for choosing us. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you put your spirit in all of us so that we can choose you. Blessed be you and bless the kingdom. In the name of your son, our king and our priest, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. All praise to the most high. Thank you, guys. Good lesson tonight. We'll see you again if the Lord's will. On Saturday on the at Sabbath 12. at 12 o'clock. Um, we had a live the other day. For some reason, they started buffering me on TikTok, on YouTube, and it was black. My wife tried to go, and she couldn't either. Um, and I suppose I had three other platforms. I've been so busy, I haven't been able to put them together. But 
The Lord is still making it work when we get this word out. We get this message. It's been another beautiful lesson. Um, all praise to the Most High. The Lord says, don't rehearse anything you say. I'll put what? The words, the words in, in your mouth. mouth. And the truth will do what? <laughs> Make you free. All right, folks. All right. Good night, family. Good night. All praise to the Most High. All praises. Thank you guys again. All praise to the Most High. Okay. All right. Thank you guys out there.